CBS Television Sports presents the National Football League. everyone we're in Tampa Florida for National Football League action this evening and we're at Tampa Stadium where the Detroit Lions take on the Washington Redskins each team with a record of two and one in preseason play it's warm in Tampa about 82 degrees we'll tell you more about the conditions a bit later on I'm Jack Puck and with me to describe the game this evening two gentlemen whom you know very well Pat Summerall from TV and from his days with the Giants and Don Perkins, who last year was the fullback running star for the Dallas Cowboys. Don, nice to have you with us. How you doing? Thank you, Jack. Very well. Don, uh, as we talk about these two teams, we talk about Washington and Detroit both. And in terms of disappointment from last year, but certainly at this time, in preseason, both teams are very optimistic. Yes, they are optimistic. Vince Lombardi, of course, is the new head coach at Washington, and everyone's quite interested to see what Mr. Lombardi can do with the team that was 5-9 as of last year. From what we could find out, I think uh, the Redskins and Lombardi are looking uh, for an offensive running attack to supplement Sonny Jurgensen's passing. Isn't that what you hear? That's right. This is one thing they've never had was the offensive running game to complement the passing game, and also they've had a very porous defense, and this is another thing that they're trying to correct, and this is one reason, Pat, they brought Sam Huff out of retirement. You talk about defense and you immediately think of the Detroit Lions because Detroit has been a team for a long time known for defense, Don. That's right. As a matter of fact, last year they were third in the NFL in total points or, and total yardage given up. I think they averaged only 17 points per game for the season. Don Frick, is good to have you with us. Now to the sidelines and Bill Maser. You know something, Pat, you were saying sidelines. I feel like I'm in the middle of the Washington Redskins huddle. The players are just here to the side of me. Uh, Jack, you said before that it was 82 degrees. I had checked with the Weather Bureau. They said it was 82. You'll think I'm nutty, but it doesn't feel that warm down here, although the ball players themselves have said it's just a little bit humid, but it's not, you know, overpowering hot, kind of humid. We're at Tampa Stadium, and we have a crowd of about 45,000. The starting lineups for the two teams are taking the field. We have one more order of business before the kickoff and the start of the game here in Florida, and that will be our national anthem. They've had the toss of the coin, and the Detroit Lions won the toss. They elected to receive, so Washington will be kicking off, and you might see a little something different on the part of Charlie Gogolak, who will do the kicking, Pat Summerall. Talking uh, with some of the Washington people, uh, they respect so much the amount of speed that Detroit has deep. I don't know exactly know who will be deep yet, but we'll have to take a look. But Gogolak is going to lie the ball down flat on the sides and kick it to the corners of the field. Jack? Now let's enjoy our national anthem. a very enthusiastic crowd here this evening and you know that the one name that they recognize seemingly most of all was that of Sonny Jurgensen as we speak to you from Tampa Florida these two teams the Lions and Washington met twice last year one in preseason play and once during the regular season and Washington won them both each team two and one in preseason play the deep men are all Alty Taylor number 42 for Detroit along with Larry Walden, number 49, and we'll see where Gogolak kicks the ball. He does not kick it to the goal line, but nonetheless, it is picked up by Walton, and he's to the 15-yard line, to the 20, 25, and shy of the 30-yard line. One thing about those short kicks, Pat, if somebody picks them up and gets through that first line of 
defenders, they can break them for a long way. Well, of course, when you when you kick the ball like that and, and decide not to challenge the two deep men, you take that gamble. If it doesn't bounce uh, crazily like you hope it does when you kick it like that, then somebody can pick it up and break it before your coverage gets down. Bill Munson is the starting quarterback, number 19. Mel Farr is in the backfield with him, along with Bill Triplett at the tailback spot. Wide receiver to the right is Bill Malinchek, and there's a swing pass to Triplett. He crosses the 30-yard line, 35, 38-yard line, and he's got a first down. It's the first race down of the day. However, a flag has been thrown, and we have a clip called against the Detroit Lions. And so Detroit, on the first play, had picked up about 12 yards, but the play will be called back, and there's nothing that hurts any worse than that, Don Perkins, at the start of the game. You know, that's right, Jack, and there's no ideal place on the field to have a 15-yard penalty. Regardless of where you are, it hurts. Sort of changes your whole offensive plan. Uh, whatever strategy you had worked out to call on first down, second down, or whatever it might be, when you get those 15-yard penalties, it puts you right in the hole. It just makes it almost impossible to come out of. Ed Flanagan is the one who was caught with the clip, and it sets the Lions all the way back inside their 15-yard line to the 14 and makes it first down and long yardage. They've got to come out to the 37. The Redskins are on the bench on our side of the field. Second down and 20, first down and 23. Munson with a long count and a pitch to far. He's chased from behind and hauled down. The pressure was put on first of all by Jim Norton, the defensive end, and then the tackle was made by Brig Owens, who had come up from the safety spot to drop him. And so a conservative call by Munson brings about a second down situation. It'll be second down and nine. 19, excuse me. The Redskins, I think, throughout most of the afternoon will stay in a, a regular pro-style 4-3 defense. If they were to choose to Red Dog to shoot one of their linebackers, this, of course, second and long yardage would be one of the downs they might do it. Malinchak is wide to the left. The same setbacks and Munson to the air. Stays in the pocket. He has Farr out in front of him and gives it to Farr. And he breaks a couple of tackles, crosses the 25-yard line, and now fumble, and Washington is recovered. That would have been a third down play coming up, but Mel Farr gave up the football. Washington took over, and the Redskins get the ball for the first time as Spain West, uh, Musgrove recovered the fumble. Here it is again. You get a chance to, to look at Munson going back in the pocket to pass. Uh, the Redskins put on the put on the pressure, and Munson has to come out. He dumps it off to far, and we'll just have to have another look at who makes the recovery. I think it was Spain Musgrove. And it was Huff making the first hit, and there is a flag down on the first running play as Larry Brown, the rookie for the Redskins, took a handoff on the quick hitter from Jurgensen. Jerry Allen is the other running back, and we'll see what this flag is all about. It was first and ten from the 24-yard line of the Lions. And yardage is being marked off against Detroit, and here is the infraction. We have an offside against Detroit, making it first and five from the 19-yard line for the Redskins with Jurgensen at quarterback. Jerry Allen, number 20, is running back along with Larry Brown. Wide to the left comes Charlie Taylor. Jerry Smith is the tight end. A first down play. There's Allen running with the ball, tripped up on the line of scrimmage, and he hurdles forward for a couple of yards. John Baker, the defensive end, has been around for a long time. Got a hand on Allen, tripped him up. It'll be a third down play. You might see the Redskins run the ball quite a bit this afternoon because this is one of the things that Coach Lombardi wants to improve on the Redskins. They need to have a consistent running game. They've made some cuts as of late, and there are more cuts that are going to have to be made. Bob Long is in that lineup for the Redskins who go for the first down, and I do not believe that they made it on that third down play. Paul Newmoff, outside linebacker number 58, made the tackle, and there's an injury on the play. It is Newmoff who made the stop, and we have a timeout charged to Detroit. Jack, you were talking a minute ago about uh, about 
the fact, and Don was too, about the fact that Washington would probably run a lot of running plays in order to establish, they hope, a running game. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, through the afternoon. As it turned out on that play, the Redskins picked up a first down on their first and 10 at the 14-yard line of Detroit. And during the timeout, Sonny Jurgensen talked it over with Vince Lombardi. I don't suppose, Jack, there is a more famous profile anywhere in football than that of Vince Lombardi. Or a quicker arm in football than that of Sonny Jurgensen. Terry Miller is in there at the left linebacker's spot, taking over for Paul Newmoff, who walked off under his own power. Bob Long goes to the right. Charlie Taylor split left a couple of yards. They shift in the Washington backfield. This is a first down play. And Jerry Allen going wide. And he gets down to the 10 yard line before the tacklers, led by Alex Karras, made the stop. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Allen picked up four that time. Second down and six. Larry Brown still in there along with Jerry Allen. This time Long comes left and Charlie Taylor goes right. The tight end is still Jerry Smith. Second down and six. Jurgens into Allen again. Allen inside the 10-yard line, but the Detroit front line has always been tough, and it's pretty tough tonight. It's always been a good defense, particularly against the run. Uh, Detroit not staying necessarily in a strict 4-3 defense so far. They've done a lot of shifting around. That time, I think Jurgensen might have automatic uh, to try to take advantage of the position of one of those linebackers. And it was Wayne Walker who made the stop on the play. It is third down and four as a result. And we'll see if Jorgensen concerns himself with field goal position on this play. Going to the air and looking for three yards, throwing it in the end zone to Taylor, who made his move, but couldn't get away from the veteran Dick LeBaud. It'll be a fourth down play. Charlie Taylor was working on Dick LeBaud. There is a lot of talent battling in that end zone. LeBeau, by the way, intercepted five passes last year. This is his 11th year in the National Football League. And usually when an opponent is picking on somebody, they stay away from him. But some of the relative newcomers to the Lions have strengthened also, adding to the overall Detroit strength. This is Goglak with a field goal attempt. Rig Owens holding from the 15-yard line. There are our first points of the game. The score, Washington 3, Detroit nothing. Charlie Gogolak, who just kicked the 15-yard field goal, will kick off. Aldi Taylor, number 42, is deep and closest to you. It's Larry Walton, number 49. Gogolak did not try to get it to the goal line last time, and the same thing applies. And it is picked up by Malinchak, one of the front men. No, it's not Malinchak. Running with the ball is Wheatman, a linebacker. And he was stopped inside the 30-yard line on the 28. Wheatman had no choice but to pick up that ball and run with it. Jack, we saw an awful lot of those onside kicks, or squib kicks as we call them, from the kickoff position a few years ago when Travis Williams was having so much luck running back kickoffs. We have Triplett in the backfield, along with Mel Farr, as Munson calls the signals. Malinchak to the left, Farr running with the ball, couldn't get inside, went outside. And he was tripped up and knocked into the air on a fine stop for Washington by Mike Bass, who came up from the corner to make the hit. Bass is the second-year man from Michigan who, at the moment, figures to be doing a lot of playing. Tom Roussel, left linebacker for the Redskins, number 54, was also in on the action. It's second down and eight from their own 30-yard line for the Lions. McCullough is wide to the right. Sanders, the tight end, is on the left side. And there is a draw play that didn't go. And there's no better man to talk to about a draw play than Don Perkins. Why didn't that one perk? Perkins? Jack, I was waiting for a draw play that worked to talk about. But no, this is one when you try to capitalize, of course, on the defensive line's rush. And they smelled that one all the way. 
It was Frank Bosch running right into the ball carrier, stopping him for a loss of two on the play, making a third and ten back at his own 28-yard line for quarterback Bill Munson. He's from Utah State now in his sixth year. Both McCullough and Malinchak are wide right, and Sanders is split left. Just a couple of yards. Triplets in the pass pattern. Munson throws outside, and it is caught by McCullough. And let's see where they mark his forward progress as he wrestled all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be marked at the 34, and it'll be a fourth down play. He knew he had to get the first down, so he made that second effort, Pat. He knew right where he was. I think uh, once he gets to the sidelines, uh, one thing that might be discussed with Earl McCullough is the fact that he didn't have enough yardage to make the first down before he made the original cut. Uh, once he saw that he hadn't gotten the yardage, then he had to make that extra move, as you pointed out. Ricky Harris is deep, along with Walt the Flea Roberts. And Lem Barney booted the football, a fair catch is called for and taken by Walt Roberts. There is a little bit of hitting that went on, but it was of no consequence, and the Redskins take over. We have 8.09 remaining in the first quarter. The Redskins leading 3 to nothing on a 15-yard field goal by Charlie Gogolak. Sonny Jurgensen still in there at the quarterback spot. Bob Long is wide to the left. Charlie Taylor's to the right. I give to Jerry Allen, the second man. He ran right into John Baker, the defensive end. Baker didn't do much that time except hold his own ground, and he made the stop. You might have noticed also that Washington ran out of the eye formation. That is, with the, the two setbacks, the two running backs, one directly behind the other, which is something that we haven't seen him do before. Lenny Haas is the center for the Redskins as we try to set their lineup. Vince Bermudo, their regular right guard, is not suited up tonight. John Wooten was not a starter. Ray Shanke, along with Mitch Johnson on that front line. Jurgensen to the air, and the pass is caught spectacularly. To the air and making the catch was Larry Brown, the defensive back, and that's one thing the Redskins have been doing. Mike Weger made the stop. They've been throwing to their backs more under Vince Lombardi than they did before. That's a Lombardi trait. As I look at uh, Larry Brown, who's 5'11 and 195, but Don Perkins, he's just about the same size. Possibly you were a little bit bigger in the last couple of years. And I know you've been asked many times, Don, uh, how a guy your size handles all those big, big men. Coming up to the line of scrimmage here, Pat. We'll talk about that after okay. this play. It's third down and three from the 35. There's the draw, and Larry Brown tried to break a tackle, but he couldn't. As Alex Karras lights down to it and brings about a fourth down play, and the Redskins will be unable to gamble in this situation. You know, as a running back, normally you're always playing against much larger guys, so this was nothing new to me as a pro ball player, Pat, and uh, I feel that most backs are used to this kind of uh, opposition. You play against men that are much larger, whether you're in college or high school or whatever level, whatever level you're competing at. Mike Bragg will do the punting. He's standing inside his 25-yard line, and the deep men are Larry Walton, number 49, and Lem Barney, number 20, and you know about him. If you're a football fan, you always hope that Barney will latch onto the ball, but he's driven back to the nine-yard line. What a kick that was. He makes the move. The flag has been thrown. Barney gets that flag. One man, Hansberger. Being harassed as Barney's going to go the distance, but we'll see what the flag is all about. Barney fields the ball on his nine, and we'll check on two flags. One that was thrown shortly after he started to run, and another about midfield. We'll see what it's all about. Lem Barney showed you what it's all about. Brother, can he run? Can he go? And the Lions love to block for him because they know when they throw a block, he's liable to take off. That's one of the things that the Redskins feared most was the speed of the deep receivers, whether it be on a kickoff or a punt return like that. And I guess that's one of the real dangers as this play is being called back. That's one of the real dangers of having a punter who can kick it as far as Mike Bragg. It's so hard to get down underneath and cover it. That time he drove uh, Barney all the way back to his nine yard line. The Redskins simply couldn't get out of the knee. He kicked that ball over 70 yards, about 74 yards. And a clip is called against Mooney. 
the linebacker for Detroit, and it brings the ball all the way back to the nine. What a thrill it is to see a fellow like Len Barney go. Change of pace and the burst of speed when he needs it. But now the Lions are going to have to go from their own seven yard line. First down and 10. They trail 3 0, 551 remaining in the first quarter. Munson at quarterback with Barr, with Triplett. McCullough to the right. Triplett running with the ball. And he crosses the 15 yard line. Chris Hamburger, the linebacker, was taken out on a good block up front by Roger Scholes, number 73. Triplet straight ahead, first down. Through a big hole up the middle. Shy of the 30 yard line to the 29 for a Detroit first down. The Lions must have figured out something then, because uh, as I looked at the middle linebacker, Sam Huff, I thought perhaps they might be t attacking the middle with it second and one. Huff must have been keying on uh, the wrong setback. I don't know which one it was, but uh, he went in the wrong direction, and the Lions happened to have picked just on that particular spot with that running play right there. A first down play from their own 28-yard line for the Lions. Munson gives to Farr. And with triplet blocking for him, he tried to cut inside, but Tom Roussel, the left linebacker, slid off the block and made the tackle. We have 4.49 remaining in the quarter, the clock running. Redskins leading by the score of three to nothing. As you watch the Redskin defense this time, watch the two linebackers, uh, Roussel, number 54, and Hamburger, number 55. Wherever the tight end Sanders for Detroit goes, Roussel will go with him. See him swapping sides right there? Hamburger comes back to the other side, not necessarily the weak side, but uh, because he has more speed, that's where he stays. And Roussel is right on top of Sanders. Here's a quickie out here to McCullough. McCullough is bumped out of bounds at the 42-yard line, and that will be a first down. Rick Owens, the left safety, staying with McCullough, made the stop. McCullough, number 25, caught 40 passes last year for the Lions. Munson surely has some people to throw to on this football team. Indeed, he does. And talking to some of the Detroit coaching staff before, they were talking about what a what a fantastic training camp uh, Charlie Sanders has had. He too caught 40 passes last year. He's number 88, the tight end, and he's tight on the right side with McCullough in a slot left. And they give to Triplett. He ran into Sam Huff, the middle linebacker, who stuck his nose right up to the line of scrimmage to make the stop, along with Spain Musgrove. Middle linebacker Sam Huff, number 70. Watch him react to this play. Planning in the center, trying to make the block, and Huff uh, keying on Triplett immediately. As soon as Triplett started to move out of his running back position, Huff went that way, and Flanagan, the center, just couldn't catch up with him. It's a second down play, second and nine from their own 43-yard line for the Lions, and Munson to the air again, looking outside to McCullough, and threw his hand. McCullough made a move on Pat Fisher as though he were going deep. And Munson threw the comebacker, and the ball was there, but McCullough couldn't hang on. As a defensive back playing against a guy with that tremendous speed like McCullough has, you have to give him room. Here it is again. You see how much room Fisher is giving him, and uh, again, that just points out how much he has, how much respect he has for that great amount of speed. McCullough, a former hurdles champ, 5'11", 175, second year from USC, and he can really go. He's on the left side now with Bill Malinchak on the right side. Triplet, the lone setback. He's blocking for Munson on third and nine. Munson throws, and it is incomplete. Sanders came back and tried to help him out, making an additional move. But Huff was covering, along with Tom Roussel, and it's a fourth down play. We pause five seconds for station identification. It's a punting situation, and Lem Barney stands at his 30-yard line waiting for the snap. Ricky Harris, a real workhorse for the Redskins, is inside his 20-yard line along with Walter Roberts. No rush. Booming punt by Barney. They just let it go into the end zone. It's whistled dead. We'll come out to the 20-yard line where the Redskins, who are leading 3 to nothing with 321 remaining in the quarter, will take over once again. There's a fumble earlier in this game by Mel Farr. And Washington capitalized and turned it into a 15-yard field goal by Charlie Gogolak. 
the only scoring of this game. Now the Redskins go from their 20 yard line. And the Haas out over the ball at center. They're stacked in the I formation. And now they shift. Jurgensen on first down. A flag is thrown. The pass is caught by Larry Brown. Is running back. Very close to a first down, but we'll see what the flag was all about. Jack, I think they got the setback, Larry Brown, for moving just prior to the snap on that uh, play. He didn't move a great deal, but he did pull his hand up just a little bit before the ball was snapped. And, of course, the running back has to be in a set position for one full count. Before. And they had Brown in motion through the flag as first and 15 for the Redskins from their own 15. The shadows creep across the field here at Tampa Stadium. Larry Brown and Jerry Allen set behind Jurgensen. Now they shift. And Allen comes out on a wing. Bob Long is to the right. Charlie Taylor to the left. Coming this way is Brown. That he received was by Willie Banks, number 68, who was the right guard who pulled to lead the play. A lot of good blocks on that play. The left tackle, Jim Snowden, number 74, also got a good block. Watch Snowden, the left tackle, pick up the middle linebacker, Mike Lucci, and take him right out of the play. And here comes Banks out in front now, 68. And the rookie running back used him very well, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. It was not a first down, however. Second down and two coming up. time it was Jerry Allen and he did not get the first down it'll be a third down play there's Sonny Jorgensen coming to the sideline to talk to Vince Lombardi talk about this third down situation and Lombardi calls the play for him I suppose they're gonna take a little time getting used to each other Pat more has to be accomplished than you can accomplish in one training session They've been spending time together ever since Lombardi got the job or took the job in Washington. There's a mutual admiration between Jurgensen and Lombardi for Jurgensen's ability and Lombardi's coaching knowledge. Henry Dyer is in the backfield trying for the first down, and it looked like he got it as we view it from here. Henry Dyer, who spent last year with the Rams, was put in in a key situation. Those are some of the things, Don Perkins, that a coach wants to find out whether or not a back can accomplish that short yardage situation. You bet they do, Jack. That's what they say the game is all about, that third and short yardage. You'll notice two things that are really different out here this afternoon. One is that you see the Redskins running the ball so much. The second is to see a Vince Lombardi coach team shifting around in the backfield and coming out from the I formation. Bob Long is to the right. Charlie Taylor is split left. Now Jerry Allen is out on the wing on a first down play. The fake to Dyer. A good fake to Taylor Loose. And he's out. the call. Incomplete is the call. He was covered by Dick LeBeau, who stripped the football right from him. Here is Charlie Taylor from behind. It was a play pass fake that enabled him to run by LeBeau like this, plus great speed on Taylor's part. The ball was right there. LeBeau made a nice recovery to even be able to stay close to Charlie Taylor. I thought that perhaps LeBeau had knocked it out of his hands, but that's the value of our ability to show you the play again. You saw that Taylor never did quite control the football, hence the call of incomplete, making it second down and 10 for the Redskins from their own 30 with 146 remaining in the first quarter. Redskins lead three to nothing. Bob Long to the right and Taylor to the left, where he's covered by LeBeau once more. Second attempt. Coming this way is Henry Dyer. He cuts back inside. He fumbled the football, but the whistle hit low. Downfield and blocking for Dyer was Ray Shonky. Dyer carried out to the 37, making it third down and three. It was Mike Lucci who made the stop on Henry Dyer. We have 1.05 left in the first quarter, and the clock is running. Jurgensen needs three. three, 
Jurgensen has spun around in that gun. Well, you seldom see Jurgensen caught. He's been dropped four times previously this year. And he was stopped that time by Larry Hand, the defensive end, number 74, who was roaming in the Washington backfield, making it a fourth down situation and bringing in Mike Bragg to do the punting. You saw what happened. There's Jurgensen to the sideline. You saw what happened the last time Bragg punted to Barney. We'll see what happens this time. I think it was called Pat to get the ball up a little higher. He kicks the ball so high and so far anyway, it's difficult for him to make a change like this in the middle of the ball game. Larry Walton is the other deep back. This ball will roll free until it goes out of bounds, and it does inside the 25 to the 23 of the Lions. The Lions, who fumbled once earlier, showed some flashes of offense here this evening. We have eight seconds remaining in the first quarter. And the Lions are out in front by the score of three to nothing. Detroit's ball on their own 23. This will likely be the final play of the first quarter. Triplett and Farr are in the backfield with Bill Munson. And Farr tries to go outside. And what a good hit was made by Mike Bass, number 41, the second year man from Michigan. He really came up fast from the corner. And that's the end of the first quarter. The end of the first quarter with the score, Washington three and Detroit nothing. The history of the cavalry in World War II was one far different from the days of Phil Sheridan and George Armstrong Custer. Instead of horses, cavalrymen now use powerful tanks, jeeps, and armored units. But men like General George S. Patton proved that history will always have a place for men with the cavalry spirit. The few horses left in the Army today are kept at the old cavalry post at Fort Myer, Virginia. The old ones bask in the sun after years of service. The younger horses are still drafted for service as part of the Honor Guard unit of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. Theirs is the job of transporting America's heroic dead to their final resting place. Proud symbol of an army that has gone. Techniques change, but traditions endure. And the traditions of the men who won the West, who rode with Custer and Sheridan, who found glory at the charge and wrote history with their spirit, are too deeply embedded in the fiber of America ever to be lost or forgotten. The hoofbeats of the cavalry thunder still in the heart of the nation. That's the count here, Washington 3, Detroit nothing as we start the second quarter at Flanagan. Number 59, the offensive center for the Lions, Chuck Walden at left guard, number 63, Bob Kowalkowski at number 66 at right guard, Rocky Freitas, number 76, the right tackle, and Roger Scholes at left tackle, number 73. As the Lions go to work, with Malinchak to the right, Farr was in the slot, and Munson threw a rather wobbly pass, and Farr attracted a lot of attention when he went out into the pass pattern. That's the thing about the running backs, uh, Tom Perkins. When you go out there, you're either all alone, or you've got about three or four guys shooting at you. That's right. Normally, when you put a running back up to send him out for a pass, uh, the defense smells that right away, and he draws the crowd, like you mentioned. The Lions have a lot of new faces in their lineup. A lot of these fellows were acquired by trade, but they've also had an excellent draft the past few years. It was Bass and Hamburger converging for that last tackle. Making it third down and 11 for the Lions. Munson rolling out, taking some of the pressure off. Then he threw, and it is incomplete. And diving in, trying for the interception. Was Ricky Harris, number 46, and he almost picked that one off. We had a couple of players get involved down there with some extracurricular activity, including Sam Huff, number 70. We never backs away from a worthwhile fight. It's a fourth down situation for the Lions. Ricky Harris goes deep along with Walt Roberts. 
Number 47, he's closest to you, and Len Barney is doing the punting. He's standing at his nine-yard line. No big rush by the Redskins. And Barney got it off the side of the foot, but he might make out all right. Head rolls dead at the 45-yard line of the Redskins, and that's the spot where Jorgensen likes to roll from, Pat. I would be surprised. Uh, he's worked a long time on that running game, and Don Perkins and I have been talking about uh, how Washington wants to establish a running game. Uh, right now, uh, all those things that you try to establish sometimes take a, a, take a back seat to putting some points on that scoreboard. I wouldn't be surprised to see him unload right here. Jurgensen is up to his old tricks, having completed more than 55% of his passes in the three previous Redskin games. He has Bob, Lo Bob Long to the right and Charlie Taylor split left. Smith is a tight end. The pitch is to Allen. And Allen crosses the 45-yard line where he ran into Wayne Walker, number 55, the outside linebacker for the Lions. We haven't told you about the officials yet. George Rennicks is the referee. The umpire, Tony Sacco. Tom Hensley, the linesman. The back judge is Tom Kelleher. Jack Fetty, the line judge. And the field judge is Tony Scober. A pickup of two that time by Jerry Allen. Taylor to the right, long to the left. The tight end is Jerry Smith, and he has split left a couple of yards. Jurgensen with a quickie over the middle for his tight end, Jerry Smith. But Wayne Walker had him covered in fine fashion, and he got his hands up, and Smith had difficulty seeing that ball and catching the ball. In watching defenses and watching the way they change, we talked about Washington shifting linebackers before. Watch Detroit this time when Washington jumped up over the ball. Uh, while the Washington backs are in the eye formation, one behind the other, they'll be in an offset uh, defense with no middle linebacker. But once they shift, once the Washington backs shift, uh, then Detroit goes into a standard style pro 4-3. Bob Brunet is in the backfield, along with Henry Dyer for the Redskins. Third down, and they, and boy, the Lions came roaring that time. And what a tandem that was. Alex Karras, the left tackle, and the right defensive end, Larry Hand. That's the second time that Jorgensen's been dropped in this game. It's a fourth down play. We look at that again. This is also the second time that Hand has been involved in making a tackle. It's a stunt between the ends uh, and the tackles, and Hand's the first one on the scene, 74, joined by Karras. A lot of meat. Doing the punting is Mike Bragg. He's standing on his 20-yard line. Then Barney is deep. He's number 20. At the top of your screen is Larry Walden. The other deep man, fair catch called for by Barney. Is downfield with Larry Brown, a running back for the Redskins to cover. We have 13-29 remaining in the half. The Lions have the ball. First and 10 on their own 19-yard line. The Lions have made very few changes in their lineups. Bill Munson, a quarterback. He has triplet. He has Farr. McCullough's to the right. And there's Farr being wrapped up in a hurry by Carl Kammerer, the defensive end, number 66, who just wasn't taken out of the play. We were told before the game that the Lions were going to go right down the line with most of their personnel. Here's the play by Kammerer as he just beat the trap block, uh, trap block by the Detroit guard, and was able to fill the hole in time to trap far before he could break it. Bob Kolakowski was the guard who tried to block camera on the play, and he missed him. It's second down and 10. Munson, good protection, throws outside, but Sanders was overthrown. Charlie Sanders, number 88. Came on with a big bang last year. He's a second-year man from Minnesota, 6'4", 235. Good size for a tight end and a tremendous pair of hands. And he can take a whipping, too. We, we saw him take a real pasting last year against the Redskins, Pat. I think he caught uh, something like 10 passes that day, Jack. He talked, uh, Don Perkins was talking a minute ago about uh, the good drafts that Detroit had had. Last year, they got McCullough and Charlie Sanders. The year before that, Don, I think it was Lim Barney. And, and as a matter of fact, Pat, Mel last, last year, I'll... Uh, uh, McCulloch was rookie of the year, and the year before, Mel Farr was. It's third down and 10 from their own 19-yard line for the Lions, and Munson needs 10 yards. Needs protection, which he gets. He throws outside to Sanders and overthrows him. Previously on the other side, it was a first-year man, Ted Vector, who was covering. 
And this time he was well covered on the right side. Barney standing inside his tent. Harris is deep along with Roberts. And Ricky Harris will be unable to field this ball. Good coverage by the Lions and it goes out of bounds. So the Redskins take over with 12-29 remaining in the half. Washington leading three to nothing. Jack, in the first game of a doubleheader being played at uh, Cleveland, we have the Buffalo Bills leading the Chicago Bears seven to six. This is the score somewhere in the first half. And earlier today, the Philadelphia Eagles defeated the New York Giants by the score of 24 to 17. From their own 34-yard line, the Redskins go. With Bob Long to the left, Charlie Taylor to the right, they're in the eye formation. They've run out of that eye earlier today. Rene is set by Jurgensen in the backfield. They give us to Henry Dyer. Coming up fast from the secondary was Wayne Rasmussen, number 47 for the Lions, and a good hit. He came out of his safety spot, keying on that running back, Dyer. It's second down and 10 from the 34-yard line for the Redskins. Still about 80 degrees here in Tampa. And it might take its toll on these players before much longer. Taylor right, long left. Gary Smith, the tight end, is on the left side. Jurgensen swings the screen pass out here, and it was wrapped by Brune. Bob Brune, who came on very well, Pat, as a running back for the Redskins last year, dropped that ball, and everything that any one of these Washington running backs does today is going to really be felt because they have to cut down to 49 by Monday and they have about 56 on their squad. About seven to go. Brunet, in fairness to him though, has been out. And this is the first game back after quite a while of being on the sideline. There's quite a while of being on the sideline with an injured shoulder. That's Bill Austin, former Pittsburgh Steelers head coach who now runs the offensive line. This is third down and 10 now. They fake the draw and they fake it well. The pass was wobbly as Jorgensen failed to zing the ball as he usually does and he ended up flat on his back as he was hit. And it is a fourth down play. A fourth down and Mike Bragg is in to punt once more. Going deep for the Lions, Lem Barney. Along with Larry Walton. Bragg is standing on the 20-yard line. The kick is rather well covered by the Redskins, and it's out of bounds inside the 35-yard We beg your indulgence. We're having some audio and video difficulty. Please stand by. We'll resume as soon as facilities have been restored. Redskins will tell you under Vince Lombardi it's a hard training camp, certainly, and I know the Lions have had one, too. But usually, defense is ahead of offense at this stage of the season. First and 10 for the Lions from their own 32-yard line. We mentioned earlier, and I don't know if I completed the thought, that the Lions are going to go right down the line today for the most part with a pretty set lineup. At the moment, we're having technical difficulties in our football game emanating from Tampa, Florida. And right at the moment, we're on the air with one camera. So you'll join hands with that one cameraman, and he'll show you everything that happened. It's a first down play for the Lions from their own 32-yard line. Aldi Taylor is in the lineup now for the first time. And the ball is pitched to Taylor. Taylor turned the corner and then cut back inside and made worthwhile yardage. Taylor is the first year man from Utah State who was so brilliant in the college all-star game and almost won the most valuable player honors. 5'10", 195, and he can do a lot of things. And Jack in talking to the Lions coaching staff, they are really high on Aldi Taylor. They say he's got moves they've never seen. And it was a first down carry by Taylor. First down now for the Lions from their own 43-yard line. A give to Taylor. He slid away from Sam Huff, but Huff 
was able to stay with the tackle and make the stop, and Taylor picked up. About a yard and a half on the play. We'll call it one yard, making it second down and nine from the Lions' 45-yard line. Bill Munson has gone all the way at quarterback. McCullough is still in there as the wide receiver, number 25. Charlie Sanders, the tight end, number 88. McCullough comes left. And Sanders is on the right side with Bill Malinchak, the wide receiver to the right. Taylor is on a wing now. And triplet the fullback. And what a brilliant pass that was to Sanders, who gives up the football. Ricky Harris running with it to midfield and down into the great territory. Now we saw a little bit of everything on that pass play. Munson really drilled the ball right through to the defenders down Perkins. Sanders made a great catch. But then the fumble. We're going to take another look at that. Charlie Sanders made a fine move, fine catch. The only thing, he forgot the handle. Turned out he was hit from behind by Hoff, and this was Ricky Harris running it back. That Harris is one of many fighting for jobs in the Redskins secondary, too. He's a fine runner. He always has been a good uh, kick returner. Still trying to find a spot in the Redskins secondary. Well, after that first town dash by Aldi Taylor, then the pass completion to Sanders. Looked like the Lions were rolling and they're still trailing three to nothing with 10.08 remaining in the half. But the fumble by Sanders when hit from behind by Sam Huff. And Ricky Harris picked it up. They turned the first fumble into a field goal, the Redskins did. Bob Long is to the right. Taylor's split a couple of yards on the left side. Gergensen throwing long for long, and he can't hit him. There's that old bromide in football, Pat. You recover the fumble, throw the ball, and try to sting that other club in a hurry. Yeah, try to take advantage of the fact that they might be a little bit shocked uh, over what happened to them, and before they can get their defensive uh, platoon together and decide how they want to play it, you try to hit them before they're quite ready for their, your attack. On that play, Bob Long was unable to shake Lem Barney, who's playing that left cornerback for the Lions. He's number 20. Now Long is out of there. And into the ball game for the Redskins is Walt Roberts. He's on the left side. They give to Henry Dyer, following his guards. And busting inside the 45-yard line, it'll bring about a third down play. And that Detroit defense rallied in a hurry. Alex Karras got over there along with Mike Lucci, the middle linebacker, number 53. And Mike Weger, number 28, was also in on the action. It's a third down play. It is third and four for the Redskins. Once again, we beg your indulgence. There has been some technical difficulty in the audio and the video portion of the NFL game, but we will return just as soon as facilities have been restored. Thank you. Cornerback, number 44. So it's a fourth down play. And the Lions, after fumbling the football, called on their defense to stop the Redskins, and they did. Mike Bragg is into punt once again. Are they going to try? Now, it is a punting situation. And Bragg is at his 45-yard line. Lem Barney is deep again, along with Larry Walton. Uh, this one heads for the end zone. In and out. As Mike Bragg really put a foot to it. And the Lions will take it at their own 20-yard line. Uh, once again, we ask your indulgence. We're still having problems with the audio and the video portion of the NFL game. But they're working very industriously, and we will return as soon as facilities have been restored. Thank you very much. We continue to have technical difficulties, but uh, the Detroit Lions are rolling right now. Earlier, Bill Malinchak caught a nine-yard pass, and then the first down attempt was by Bill Triplett, and he just blew out to the 40-yard line. The Lions have the ball on their own 40, first and 10. They trail 3 0 750 remaining in the half. Earl McCullough to the right. Aldi Taylor in the backfield along with Bill Triplett. Taylor kind the ball. What a hole there was up the middle. And he battles to midfield. 
Sam Huff, the little linebacker, stuck his nose in there, Pat, and they ran right by him that time. Again, I think it was uh, the fact that Huff might have keyed on the wrong back, which is something that uh, yet you credit to the Detroit spotters and the Detroit uh, coaching staff for picking up. It looked like Huff went with Triplett. And uh, Triplett didn't have the football. Aldi Taylor carried to the 49-yard line of the Redskins for another first down. Ricky Harris made that last tackle. Allen Jack is to the right. With Earl McCullough split left, a first down play. Munson with a give to Taylor, and he eluded the linebacker, Rizal, who then got up and hit him, and Taylor fumbled, but Detroit got it back. So there was a little bit of everything on that play. Taylor got away from number 54, Tom Rizal, who stayed right with the play and helped to cause the fumble, but Charlie Sanders recovered it for the Lions. And actually, they gained a yard on the play, and it's second down and nine from the 48 of the Redskins. Pat Summerall alongside, along with Don Perkins, I'm Jack Buck. We're going to be hearing from Bill Mazur as we go along throughout the evening. We have 6.35 remaining in the half. Washington leading three to nothing. Triplets out on a wing. Here's a screen to Taylor. He tripped, and then he was covered by Hamburger. Taylor might have gained a little more ground, but Hamburger was coming up in a hurry, along with the defensive back, Mike Batts. Pat Summerall, you and I saw the Washington team quite often last year. I know one thing that's obvious right now. They're not blitzing this year nearly as much as they did last season. So right, Jack. Last year, they did a lot of jumping around, and the linebackers were blitzing, oh, at least once every series, it seemed like. This time, it's a controlled defense, a regular 4-3. Uh, they flip-flop the linebackers, Roussel to the strong side, Hamburg to the weak side, but that's the only change they make. Third and six, Detroit, from the Washington 45. Straight back, Munson. Not much pressure. Pass outside. First down at the 29-yard line of the Redskins. Alan Jack, the third-year, fourth-year man from Indiana, went high, caught the ball, and didn't attempt to do anything until he put that ball away. And that's the formation that a lot more pro teams are using this year. Baltimore, I guess, they use it more than anybody else when they put the tight end, in their case, John Mackey, on one side, and their two fast receivers on the same side of the field. In Detroit's uh, instance, it's McCullough and Malinchak on the same side, and that's the way they've got it now at the bottom of your screen. So we heard that term trips all season long. Three receivers to the one side. Straight ahead goes Triplett, and a flag has been thrown. A flag has been thrown just as the tackle was made. It looks like a uh, grabbing of the face mask. We'll say if we're correct. foul face mask and so the Lions have their deepest penetration they're now to the 13 yard line of the Redskins with 522 remaining in the half Washington leading three to nothing a 15 yard field goal in the first quarter by Charlie Gugelak from the 13 there's a pitch to Taylor whatever ground he got he earned as he tried to pick his way through that Washington defense. Chris Hamburger, the weak side linebacker for Washington, number 55, doesn't make the tackle, actually, but watch him take down the uh, block of McCullough first, number 25, and get out in front and take down some of the interference. He did get a hand in on the tackle. Rocky Freitas is the one he fought off as Freitas, the right tackle, was trying to lead the play, and it jammed things up, so Taylor got only two. Second down and eight from the Washington 11. Runs him to throw. Swings it outside to Triplett. Triplett inside the five. That'll make it a third down play. Great pursuit by the Washington defense. Once they saw a triplet all by himself out there, and Chris Hamburger again led the defensive charge. Watch how open triplet gets here. He's number 38. As he comes out of the backfield, he stopped momentarily. You saw him pause probably to check to see if the Redskins might be blitzing. Now, he has to be the responsibility of the middle linebacker, Sam Huff, who has committed himself to get back in the pattern. 
Hansberger comes out and makes makes the tackle. As that little pause that Tipler took right at the beginning is what set that play up. It's third down and about one amongst the throw. times they've practiced that pass in training camp so far. Many times, Jack. We're going to get another look at that play. Very quick pass. Sanders gets away from the linebacker real quickly, and Munson hits him right over the middle. Very fine drive by the Lions. And so the Lions are on the scoreboard, and the extra point attempt by man is good. And the score is now Detroit 7 and Washington 3. That's the score here as the Lions have taken the lead on a four-yard pass from Munson to Sanders, his tight end. Errol Mann added the extra point, and now Mann will be kicking off. The deep men for the Redskins are Walt the Flea Roberts, closest to you, and Ricky Harris, deeper in the end zone at the top of your screen. And they expect Mann to put this ball all the way down in, and he did it very effortlessly. And, oh, oh, uh, no, he's downed. <laughs> Roberts had an idea of running it out, and it looked like Ricky Harris talked him out of it, Pat. That's the responsibility of that other man back there with him. If he doesn't think he has a chance, either on a fair catch of a punt or on a kickoff like that, and he thinks he's too deep and can't get back to the 20-yard line, then he's supposed to tell him to stay in there. We have 346 remaining in the half. The lights have been turned on now as dusk arrives here in Tampa, Florida. Sonny Jurgensen has played quarterback all the way, and he's still in there. He has Roberts as the wide receiver to the right. Jerry Smith's foot right. Charlie Taylor to the left. Jurgensen was hit as he threw, and the pass was incomplete. And Jurgensen was dropped again. He's been dumped a few times today, Don Perkins. He sure has, and I'm sure that's causing Coach Lombardi a lot of concern. Alex Karras is number 71. Two blockers on him, the center and the right offensive guard, 68 and 56, and he still manages to get between them. And watch this second effort coming up right here as he gets to Jurgensen. Watch how fast he gets up. He gets to Jurgensen just as he plants his foot. Well, he's probably the reason that Sonny overthrew. Excuse me, Jack. He should get up in a hurry. He only weighs 255. <laughs> it's hard to even get down in a hurry anyway. That makes <laughs> it's a second down play. Jurgensen committed to the air on this series, it would seem. Throws a little flip out here to Henry Dyer on the screen. Dyer crosses the 35, and he's got a first down. Oh, that back who can catch a football and do something with it. What a difference it makes, Don Perkins. It certainly does. It, we'll take another look at that. And, Jack, that's Ray McDonald, I believe, coming out of the backfield there. He sets up the block, takes the screen pass. Very fine receiver. An excellent play, well executed by the Redskins. And I apologize, that is Henry Dyer. Right, they switch uniforms as McDonald is uh, not on the Redskins playing list at the moment. There's an injured player back up field and the timeout has been charged to the Redskins as a result. The clock is stopped with 3.18 remaining in the half. Lions are leading by the score of seven to three, but the Redskins have a bit of momentum going now following that pass reception by Henry Dyer. Look. Joining the fine CBS evening lineup. Well, that's a little more comfortable down there on the playing field, Don, and I imagine the players welcome this cooling off. It was warm at the outset of the game. Yes, it was. We had a little rain here in Tampa on yesterday, and that made for the humidity to be a little higher, and uh, the comfort factor, of course, uh, went down. But it is a pleasant evening here in Tampa. I'm sure the fellas welcome this cool air that came in. Do you miss not being with the Cowboys this year, Mr. Perkins? No, Jack. As a matter of fact, I don't. A lot of people feel that I should be chomping at the bit or having itchy feet, but uh, I don't. Uh, I enjoy the role of a spectator very much. We're able to identify the player we couldn't before, for sure. So we didn't mention any name. It was Bob Brunet, the running back, number 26. You can see the crowd here. In shirt sleeves, enjoying the football game, but not enjoying the fact that Brunet was shaken up. He's trying to get up under his own power, as he's being tended to by the Redskin trainer. When play is resumed, the ball will be on the Washington 39, first and 10, with 3.18 remaining in the half. 
You know, Jack, as you sit here and, and look at this magnificent stadium in Tampa, one thing that impresses me so much about it is that most of the seats are between the 20s. It's very high, as you can see. No obstructions in front of anybody. And uh, I have no idea, just looking, how many seats are uh, between the two 20s, but the bulk of them certainly are. They're hopeful of getting a uh, professional franchise here in the Tampa area, perhaps during the next expansion period along the sun coast of Florida. They're bringing out the stretcher for Bob Brunet. Bob is a second year man from Louisiana Tech and we won't even try to guess what his injury is but I know the Redskins are not taking any chances of him ambulating and he really doesn't appear to be as we put the glasses on him and you look at him in real bad shape they're just going to make sure and take him off in that fashion. As I remarked earlier Brunet has had some problems with his shoulder and this is the first time he's been able to play in the last couple of weeks. I couldn't tell uh, as you said Jack exactly what was bothering him. But probably because of that previous injury, they don't take any chances of uh, any recurrence. That's right. He did have a shoulder separation, and so Brene is being helped off. So the Redskins are a little bit shorthanded this evening, especially on the front line. They'd like very much to get Vince Permuto back in there where he can play every game, Pat. Well, hey, Vince was sorely missed last year when he, too, had shoulder problems. Now I'm told that Vince has strained a knee ligament. So, as Jack Buck was just telling you, Possibly they are a little short in a couple of spots. Well, let's see. Henry Dyer is now joined in the backfield by Jerry Allen, number 20, who started the game. And it's first and 10 for Jurgensen and company. With Bob Long to the right, Taylor split left a couple of yards. Jerry Smith, the tight end, is on the right side. And the running play to Dyer gained only a yard. And some big hitting up front by the Detroit Lions. Led by Wayne Walker, number 55, the outside linebacker. That linebacker, linebacking core has always been a source of pride for the Lions. De defense, I think, Jack, has always been uh, what you think of when you start thinking about a Detroit team. Uh, Joe Schmidt, of course, the present Lion coach, is one of the great linebackers uh, to ever play professional football. Second down and nine. They shift out of the eye. Staying on the ground, Jerry Allen blows across the 45-yard line. The clock continues to run, and we have 2.35 remaining in the half. There'll be a third down play coming up. Joe Robb is in there, and he was in on that tackle. Robb is one of many who underwent knee surgery. He's number 84, playing the left defensive end, a 10-year veteran from TCU, who formerly played with the St. Louis Cardinals. The Lions can stay away from those injuries that plagued them last year. They're very likely to do better than their last season's record. There's the whistle, and we're going to have the two-minute warning. Two minutes remaining in the half here at Tampa. Third down and two for the Redskins, the ball at their own 46-yard line. And we'll see what Jurgensen comes up with as the Redskins trail by the score of 7-3. to three. Needs two and a half yards, and he's going to throw for it. And he throws for it. and dumped by Barney. Glenn Barney back to help out was Mike Lucci, the middle linebacker, but Long made some outstanding moves in that pass better. Jurgensen just barely has time to throw this time as um, the defensive end for Detroit. Joe Robb almost made the contact. Sonny hung in the pocket and found Long. It must have been his own defense for him to be that open and split the zone. The ball to the 28-yard line of Detroit. Long goes left, Taylor to the right this time. They shift out of the eye. And Long caught another one on the other side for worthwhile yardage. At the 25-yard line for a pickup of three. Nick LeBeau was the tackler. They had forecast rain for today and this evening in Tampa. None so far, but those clouds give an indication that we might have a little rain before the evening is over. We have a minute and a half remaining in the half. The ball on the Detroit 25, and it is second down. And seven. Allen is spun up into the air. He ran right at Mike Lucci, the middle linebacker. Lucci's number 53. He's a good one. From Tennessee, eight-year veteran, 6'2", 230 pounds. 
other linebackers are bigger than he, but he is strong and quick along with it. They've got a timeout now, Jack, to uh, say what little time they have left in this first half, but the Redskins are now doing what they do best, and that's throw the ball. But this has never been enough for Coach Lombardi. He wants to see them run it. I'm sure that when we look at the second half, we'll see them running the ball again. I know, Don Perkins, as you watch them here, you're primarily impressed with the shifting in the Washington backfield. You never thought Vince Lombardi would do that. Jack, I'm really more amazed than, uh, than impressed because I just didn't think Vince Lombardi would go to a shifting or a multiple formation type offense. And this seemingly is what he's headed for there in Washington. Pat, you've seen a lot of Washington games in the past. It appears that their coach now, Lombardi, is trying to get them out of the stereotyped uh, class in which they found themselves as a strictly passing team with Sonny Jurgensen. A lot of people wonder, I think, uh, why the heck would you want to run the football if you can throw it? It would seem like it's a lot easier to pass and get your yardage, if you can, uh, through the air. But uh, as Don Perkins can tell you, it makes it so much easier if you've got the threat of the running game to present. Redskins were five and nine last year with that passing game. That, too, is indicative of why he might like to make a change. Long is wide to the right. Taylor has split left a couple of yards. It's third down and seven. They fake the draw to Dyer. And the long Number 28, the safety man. I wish I had said what I was going to earlier, Pat. They haven't thrown to that tight end very much in this first half. And that's one of the very best. Here it is again. Uh, Smith just leaving, number 87. And the draw fake is what kept, uh, what might have pinned Weger just a little bit and kept the linebackers out of the pass coverage picture. So the seesaw battle now finds Washington on top with a minute and a half left in the half. The score is 9-7 to seven with Brig Owens holding the ball. Charlie Gogolak will try to make it 10-7. to seven. With that soccer style kick of his. Up and through. 10 to 7 it is in favor of the Redskins. Gogolak had kicked the field goal earlier. And this was the pass play covering 27 yards for the Redskins. Jurgensen is number nine with Vince Lombardi. Mike Bragg, number four, the punter. Gogolak, number three, who will now be kicking off. We're talking about how hot it was here in Tampa at game time. I remarked uh, to Vince Lombardi before the game, it looked like it was going to be a hot night. And he just looked at me with that familiar smile and says, it's still a game. He has a smile that isn't a smile, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you're not really sure. <laughs> this will be Gogolak kicking off. And the deep men are number 49, Larry Walton, and number 42, Aldi Taylor. And they kicked the ball away from the deep receivers. Walton touched it. Now he has no choice. He has to run with it. He's in big trouble. He crossed the 10-yard line. It would have been down, and so he made a move for it, picked it up, got out to the 11-yard line. And with 58 seconds left in the half, the Lions trailing now, 10-7. Put the ball in play. We'll see how they approach this situation, whether they'll just sit on the football or try to move it on out and gamble might point out that they've got two of their timeouts left. They took one uh, earlier for an injured player, but they still have two, so 39, 38 seconds now, still a lot of time. Bill Munson to Taylor. Taylor out to the 15. That play would indicate that they're going to be satisfied just to run out the clock. If they had uh, had in mind trying to put some points on before the halftime comes, they would have probably either thrown the ball that play and then called the timeout. Now they're just going to let it run out. Spain Musgrove, number 71, made the tackle. He's up front along with Frank Bosch, number 73 at the tackle spots. Jim Norton, the left defensive end, number 83, and Carl Kammerer, number 66, the right defensive end. And the time is run out. The gun sounds. The end of the first half. End of the first half with the score, Washington 10 and Detroit 7. Beep, beep. Who are you? Beep. I'm a 39 Roadster, a jaunty car. I used to be owned by a big movie star. Who are you? Me? Well, I'm an international highway sign. Here in Iran, an international highway sign? Yes, yes, yes. And I come in different shapes. All right, your sign. What do you say right here? Oh, that I say. Stop at intersection, as you can see, and I'll tell you a story if you listen to me. A sign on a small road in Iran suggested 
to an airman named Foran that uh, the Iranian folk knew the English he spoke. But they stopped with stop where they began. So now you know. Well, thank you, Mr. Sign. And away we go. Play the wise man, not the fool. When you drive a car, man, drive cool. Washington leads Detroit, 10 to 7 at the half, and down to the playing field for the halftime activities, and here's Bill Mazur. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, first of all, let me just tell you that the band you're about to watch is the Brandon High School Band. Brandon is just about six miles outside of Tampa, more or less. One of the youngsters told me it's a suburb of Tampa. And tonight, this high school band, 150 strong, is playing a salute to Florida. It's their night. Let's look at them as they first play Let the Sun Shine In. That was Let the Sun Shine In, and these youngsters uh, formed palm trees and the sun. Now, with the girls carrying a checkered flag, you're going to hear them play King of the Road. They're going to form a race car. I, mi I missed my chance. Here was my chance to be a disc jockey, and I missed it. Now, so this is Let the Sun Shine In. That was Let the Sun Shine In. It still is Let the Sun Shine In. The next uh, number they play will be King of the Road. And it's a momentous time for these young people. I was watching them here on the sidelines. And in fact, this is the first time they've ever been on national television. And it's truly their moment. Now here are the young ladies coming out with the checkered flags. And they will, the band is going to form a race car. And they'll do King of the Road. Done, King of the Road. Incidentally, the band is directed by T. Edison James. The assistant director is Mr. Lonnie Keene. The choreography is by Miss Pat Bissell. Uh, you may get a chance during the course of the program to see her on the sidelines. Let me look at our monitor. Well, forget it. Right now, we're going to see a Space Odyssey 2001. The girls are going to form a moon with American flags, and the band will form a rocket. Is one of their big production numbers, the Brandon High School Band.
these young people really are marvelous. Up, up, and away. And here are the young ladies coming out again. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the Space Odyssey 2001. The next number will be uh, a dedication to the state of Florida as the band will form the shape of Florida. But right now, as you can tell, up, up, and away. Jimmy Webb, great cheer. This is still part of the Space Odyssey 2001. You can see the rocket form here. And these young people, uh, you know, it's really in some ways a shame. They've done so much work here, and the moments will seem so quick for them. And now, Swanee River, the Florida State song, and the band, as you will see, will form the shape of Florida. CBS Sports are starting something new this year. We've announced it previously on our two uh, other NFL telecasts so far. That is, we're inviting you NFL fans to, to write us and ask us questions of anything that might be bothering you or anything that you might not be sure about, about NFL football. As I said, uh, we've done it before on two previous telecasts, invited uh, the ladies particularly to write in. We've had some interesting questions, uh, one which uh, I guess sort of threw Don Perkins and I. One lady wrote in and asked what happened, uh, what would happen on a kickoff yeah, she had seen a kicker, uh, see the ball blow off the tee when a kicker was attempting to kick off to start a game or some other time, and she knew that the kicker would go up and just replace it and kick it again. What happens, Don Perkins, if the kicker approaches the ball and doesn't even hit it, just stands it? Well, first of all, Pat, he'll probably hurt his knee. Uh, <laughs> secondly, he'll probably be traded. No, seriously speaking, though, there is no penalty for not hitting the ball when you come up to kick it. The only thing is you have 30 seconds from the time the official blows the whistle to get the ball off. So if you come up and miss it, uh, you'd better get back and uh, kick again before that 30 seconds is up. Otherwise, you have a five-yard penalty. Now the Barton High School Band is completing its halftime presentation, with the, which the fans enjoyed here. They haven't announced the attendance, but it's about... 46,000 in this game promoted by the Junior Chamber of Commerce in Tampa, Florida for some worthy causes. They had a successful endeavor last year and this one likewise. Last year they had about 50,000 people as they put end zone seats in here. This is where the University of Tampa football team plays. They're one of the outstanding independents nationally each year. And that football team was introduced earlier to the crowd. And now as the second half gets underway, Arrow Mann will be kicking off for Detroit, kicking to the Washington Redskins, and the Redskins are leading by the score of 10 to 7. Looks like that rain is going to hold off, and we'll go through the evening without being interrupted. The deep men for Washington are Walt the Flea Roberts, number 47, he's closest to you, and Ricky Harris, who is half hidden behind the goalpost at the top of your screen. And it's Arrow Mann booting the ball for Detroit. Very little wind factor here. Earlier, man put the ball. There's Joe Schmidt, the head coach of the Lions. Earlier, man put the ball down into the end zone, almost put it through the goalposts. This is the third year as head coach for Joe Schmidt. This line drive knuckleball type of kick and taken by Roberts. He's to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He's a fellow who's capable of doing what Lem Barney showed you earlier, running those kicks back a long way, but he couldn't shake loose as he was finally stopped by the Lions, and Goff made the tackle. Jack and Jenny Please come to the 
come the Redskins with Jurgensen at quarterback as he has been throughout the entire game. A flag has been thrown. He gave to the second man, Jerry Allen. Allen out of bounds at the 30 yard line, and we'll see what the flag is all about. He is being chased and finally bumped out of bounds by number 47, Wayne Rasmussen. And the flag evidently is ahead against Detroit. And so that running play will stand. From the eye, here it is again. As Allen just made a simple move to the outside. Now here's the good move coming up right here. A 34-yard jaunt by Allen. And it was only the second time tonight, Pat, that they ran out of that eye formation. They didn't shift. And I think probably that's one of the things that had counted for the success of it, Jack, the fact that uh, Detroit was expecting them to shift, plus the flag was flown, and I don't care how long you play, once that whistle, uh, once the flag goes down, you're inclined to let up a little bit. Randy Schultz is in the backfield, and he carried the ball. He's in there with Jerry Allen. It's the first series of downs for Schultz. He used to be with the Atlanta team. Carried inside the 25-yard line of Detroit. The tackler was Mike Lucci, the middle linebacker, number 53. And each team two and one in preseason play. The ball is now on the 22-yard line of the Lions. It's second down and six. Taylor to the left. Bobby Mitchell is in the game for the first time, and he's wide right. Richter is the tight end. He's number 88, playing his first series. Rushed, he throws, and incomplete. Barney was covering. A blitz was on, and Jorgensen had to get rid of the ball a little too quickly. Pat Richter couldn't get to it. Here's the blitz that Jack Buck was talking about. Watch Walker, 55, come behind Hand and Rush. Hand is 74. Walker is the man who made the contact with Jorgensen. You can't see him yet. Here he comes. Walker, number 55. That's the price of being a quarterback. So Pat Richter didn't have enough time to shake loose down in the end zone. And it's third down and six from the 22-yard line for the Redskins. A flag has been thrown. Jurgensen whips a pass to his tight end. It is caught for what would have been a first down with Wayne, Wayne Rasmussen making the stop. And we'll check what the flag is all about. That would have been a first down, but I think Washington had beaten a snap, and then they came back and didn't set up properly. Could be. Detroit had the blitz going then, too, with both Lucci and Walker shooting, something that Detroit did not do much of in the first half, but they've come a couple of times in the second half. John? Sonny Jurgensen's getting a lot of pressure this afternoon, this evening, that is, but Sonny does not like to scramble and run, so despite that pressure, he's staying in the pocket tough, and uh, he's taking his lumps with it. Well, one of the backfield men for the Redskins was not set for a full second. There is another view of Joe Schmidt, the third-year coach of the Detroit Lions. He's had a lot of problems to contend with the past couple of years, but a lot of outstanding draft choices have been made by the Lions organization. And they might be ready this year, although they're surely in a tough division in the National Football League. Here's third down and 11 for the Redskins. Ball at their own 28. Jorgensen throwing, and it is incomplete. Bobby Mitchell was down in the end zone, and Dick LeBeau was staying right with him. It's a fourth down play. Gogolai kicked a field goal earlier of 15 yards. He'll attempt to give the Redskins a six-point lead now. We have 13-28 remaining in the third quarter. On the 21st of September, Detroit will open their regular season at Pittsburgh. And Washington will be opening at New Orleans. Rick Owens holding the ball at the 34-yard line. Oglak got it away, and it is good. Oglak, who kicked one earlier of 15, kicks one of 34. The score, Washington 13, Detroit 7. There's Charlie Gogolak, and the close-up gives you an idea of the, si the size or the lack of size which he possesses. And he'll be kicking off to Taylor, number 42, or Walden, number 49. And the ball is taken by one of the up men across the 30-yard line. And it was Copay 
a longtime running back, Dave Copay, in the National Football League, who caught that ball, carried it across the 30 to the 33, and the Lions, who are six points down, go to work with 13 minutes remaining in the half. Gogolak, about whom we were talking earlier, is 5'10", 165. Demel Farr, and he wasn't able to shake loose as he took the handoff from Munson. Both defenses tough here this evening, and because of that, Pat, it's difficult to ascertain just who is doing what down there. Actually, Detroit has been able to put together only one sustained drive the time that they got the touchdown. The other uh, phases of the game, Washington's defenses look very solid. Detroit fumbled twice in the first half, and both fumbles hurt them. The second down play, second and ten, a little swing out to Triplett, and uh, that might be a lateral pass. No, incomplete is the ruling. Triplett was almost behind Munson when he latched onto that football, and that's the reason the Redskins, and here comes Sam Huff limping off the field. That's the reason the Redskins covered that loose ball. So it's always a good idea when a ball goes out like that. You can't really tell unless you're just exactly in line as the official was, whether it was a forward pass or a lateral. If the Redskins had recovered, they could not have advanced it, but they could have certainly recovered the football. That's Sam Huff on the sideline, number 70. He was shaking just a bit a minute ago. His shoulder, it appeared to be. In the middle linebacking spot, number 51, John Didion, a first-year man from Oregon State. Third down play for the Lions, third and 10. Munson throwing, caught by his wide receiver, Malinchak. And that's the first down. They mark it beyond the 45 to the 46-yard line of the Lions. Munson, I remember seeing him with the Rams. Dom Perkins, he really zings the ball. And like most National Football League quarterbacks, but I that's think right. he throws it harder than a few of the others. Jack, perhaps he uh, patterned himself after Roman Gabriel out there, who throws a real bullet. And Munson made connections with Malinchak that time. For a first down play, the Lions need six to get back into the contest. Munson straight back, throws, tight end Sanders. Incomplete is the call as Ricky Harris, who always seems to be there, picked up that football and started a run. But the official right on top of the play gave it an immediate call of incomplete. George Rennix is the referee here tonight. His crew are Tony Sacco, Tom Hensley, Tom Kelleher, Jack Fetty, and Tony Scover, and they've done a good job of running this football game. We have 11.04 remaining in the half. John Hoffman, a rookie defensive end, is on the left side for Washington, number 85. He played at Hawaii. Second down and 10, and the quick hitter to Triplett, and nothing doing. He tried to run behind the block of Chuck Walton, number 63. But he was stopped by John Didion, the middle linebacker, number 51, we we're just talking about. Sam Huff rates him, Pat Summerall, as one of the best first-year middle linebackers he has ever seen. And in talking to some of the other Redskin coaches, they all are very high on uh, Didion. 6'4 and 245, a rookie from Oregon State. And he's going to be a good one, they tell us. He's playing that middle linebacker spot right now. This is a third down play. It's third down and seven. No flag, that man got back on side. Here's the safety valve out to Triplett. And he's down to the 47 yard line, shy of a first down on that third down play. It was Mike Bass coming up, number 41. He used to be with the Lions. Spent two years with the Lions, in fact, uh, on their cab squad for a time and on their active roster, I think, also for a time. They were very high on him. I do know that, Jack, uh, Mike Bass, but uh, they had so many what they felt uh, good defensive backs that they just couldn't find a spot for him. Here's a punting situation. Glenn Barney has been doing the kicking all night, and he'll do it again. He very likely will boom this one into the end zone. Ricky Harris and Walt Roberts are deep. He might run. He's going to run, but he's going to get outside. And it's very close to a first down. That was a third and four situation almost a clip by one of his blockers who was trying to shake him loose and get him around the linebacker. We'll see what the end result is. Munson is back on the field, and that would indicate that it's 
If it's not a first down, it's very close, and Detroit thinks it is. It's the first measurement that we've had all evening, I believe. Thank you, right, Jack. That's a play, uh, a run from a punt formation, or a play like that is one that that works so much better if nobody knows about it except the guy who's carrying the football. If, if the rest of the team should happen to be tipped off on it. Uh, somehow it doesn't come off nearly as well as if it's a complete surprise. Now that you look back on the play, you realize that Barney was not set up as deep as he usually was. And so I'm sure the Redskins will be looking for that tip off the next time. Here's the first down play from the 43 of Washington. A flag has been thrown. Here's the same pass to Triplett. Triplett inside the 35 yard line. While we wait to see what the infraction was, Don Perkins. Why is Triplett able to get so free out there time and time again? The linebackers are dropping off and not paying Triplett much attention, Jack. However, they do close in on him in a hurry once he catches the ball. Bill is limping slightly there, and, uh, well, he might be all right. Here, the penalty against the Lions of illegal procedure sets the ball back to the 48-yard line of the Redskins with 9.05 remaining in the half. Tom Roussel and Brig Owens were the tacklers, and there goes Bill Triplett, number 38, off the field for the Lions limping as he does so. Triplett, I think, was uh, Didion's responsibility, the middle linebacker, but he sort of got hung up with the tight end Charlie Sanders and couldn't get over in time to cover Triplett. Nick Eddy is in the contest for the first time, number 40. Second year man from Notre Dame. In there with Mel Farr. They're both in the pass pattern. The pass is incomplete as it hit the ground was off the hands of Charlie Sanders, and he was hit hard by John Didion, D-I-D-I-O-N, about whom we've been talking, number 51. Remember we told you a minute ago, watch number 51 that uh, Sanders and Didion had run together. Watch him this time. Let's the back go, and here comes Sanders coming into your picture right there. And that's where Didion got a piece of the ball, or Sanders might have knocked it up, and it just flew out of the screen. We have a second down play, second down and 15 for the Lions. Munson throws outside to Mel Farr. Farr can't get away from the quarterback, Mike Bass. And Bass got all the help that he needed and more than Mel Farr wanted him to get. And it'll be a third down play coming up, and I don't believe there was any gain on that play at all. And Jack, have you noticed the great pursuit by the Redskins? Vince Lombardi certainly has those fellas fired up, and they're going to the ball. It's a third down play, third and 15, no gain. There's Mel Farr, number 24, in your picture. He had a knee operation last year. Back full steam this season. He's averaged almost five yards per carry in the three other preseason games. Well, Munson needs 15 yards. He throws long. and whip a quarterback, Mike Bass, and had gotten a couple of steps on him. And Sanders is a big fellow, but he can move 6'4", 235. Watch Sanders now and watch who picks him up. This has to be his own defense. Uh, the linebacker, Roussel, goes back with him. Bass looked like he was expecting some deep help. The pass actually led Sanders out of bounds. If he had caught it, he would have still been out of bounds. Here's a fourth down play in a punting situation with Barney kicking and not running this time. A fair catch is called for, and they let the ball go into the end zone. And that is legal. It was Walt Roberts doing that. We have 42,477 paid here tonight. There's a timeout on the field. As we resume with 7.51 remaining in the third quarter, the Redskins, leading by six, put the ball in play from their own 20. They have Schultz in the backfield with Jerry Allen, Randy Schultz. And the fake swing to Allen. Now Jorgensen has to throw it a little more quickly than he wanted to. Closest man to it was a tackle, Walter Rock. But there was also a back in the area, so there'll be no penalty call for throwing the ball away, as Jorgensen did. He was rushed from behind. Second down and 10 from the 20. There's Gary Beeman, number 16. Pat, we were told that we might see him as a wide receiver tonight, but he has not made his debut this evening. 
he is such a fine athlete, and whether it be at quarterback, running back, or as a wide receiver, as you pointed out, Vince Lombardi, the Redskins, are trying to find a place. There's a pitch to Allen. A flag is down. Allen cuts back. He ran by Karras, and there was some real hitting at that time. At the time the play came to a close, delivering a tough blow was Mitch Johnson, number 64. And we'll see what the flag was all about. Jerry Rush made the big stop for the Lions. Here's a penalty against Detroit. Offside. See John Baker walking very slowly back into the Detroit huddle. 12 year veteran, number 78, the left defensive end. He and Alex Karras are a tough load to battle on that side of the line for any team. Second down and five, Redskins. Now somebody moved. I think it was Jerry Allen, the uh, setback, but the ball hadn't been snapped. We'll see what it's all about. The penalty is against the Redskins, so there's the five the Lions lost a while ago. Illegal motion. I think it shifted once, and then he started to shift again, and you can't do that. Could also be that uh, the offensive center, Lenny Hawes, might have moved the ball a little bit. Here's Allen. Number 20. And that's what pulled them. That's what pulled the Detroit defense offside right there. That little movement right there by number 20, Jerry Allen. Once that hand is planted, once you assume that three-point stance, you can't move. Now John Baker, about whom we were just talking, has been assessed a uh, foul by the officials, and I think he's been thrown out of the game. And here's the penalty being marked off. John Baker was really angry when he went to the sideline. It's a personal foul against Baker. And Alex Karras wants to know what it's all about. Did you see anything untoward down there, Pat? No, I didn't, but there are a lot of things you can't see. <laughs> You might, have to, you might have to be down there, Jack, to hear them. <laughs> Joe Robb is in there, number 84. There's Baker along the bench, having been banished from this contest. It's a first down for Washington. The ball is out to the Redskins 35-yard line. I suppose it was something that was said. Dick Nitrain Lane, a great name in pro football, has seen us alongside, and he was the first one to note it. And he knew that something was going on, and sure enough, Baker was tossed out. Here's the first down play for Jurgensen. A long count, now flag, too much time. The whistle had blown. The ball's up in the air, recovered by Detroit, but the whistle had blown. Delay of game. It looked like Jurgensen felt that the Redskins, uh, or the Lions, were charged up, ready to come, and so he gave them a long count, but it took too much time. That's something that can be very valuable to a quarterback. A lot of times you get into a pattern where you snap the ball on the same count all the time. Uh, on two, I think, is probably the most, the most common one. Jurgensen, as Bart Starr has always done at Green Bay, is trying to mix it up and sometimes go on a quick count, try to keep the defense a little bit off balance. I think, really, he took a look at a Detroit defense that time, and he wasn't sure about the defense and didn't know whether or not he wanted to automatic. And he took a little, a little too much time as, and sort of got his cadence out of rhythm. First and 15 as a result. And he gives to his running back, who tried to hurdle over the top, Randy Schultz, and there was no place for him to go as he ran into Paul Newmark, linebacker number 58 on the left side. Remember, Joe, uh, John Baker was thrown out of the ball game just a minute ago. His place was taken by Joe Robb. He's number 84. Allen is the blocker, followed up by John Wooten, number 67, who just come in the game. And Robb played it just about as well as you possibly can. Paul Newmoff helped with Mike Lucci, number 53, coming from the middle linebacker spot. So there was good work by the left linebacker, middle linebacker, and the left defensive end, Joe Robb, who took down the blocker. It's second down and 14, and still probing the center of that Detroit Lion. Mike Lucci was there to stop it once again with Randy Schultz, the ball carrier. And it'll be a third down play. Leading the blocking was Willie Banks, number 68, who was playing the right guard in place of Vince Permuto this evening, and he couldn't move them out of there that time. Third down and still long yardage, third down and 13. Six 
30. Remaining in the third quarter, the score is the Redskins 13 and the Lions 7. And Jorgensen needs 15 yards. We'll see if the Lions blitz. Jorgensen with time. Hits his man. Tight end with the puck the ball. Matt Richter hauled it in. Down one thing about it, Jurgensen had just the right signal call because the Lions had started to go, then they got back on side and they were back on their heels at the snap of the ball. And Jurgensen reads the defense so well, he knows where all of his receivers are, and of course the Redskins have so many great receivers on that ball club. Wayne Rasmussen was the tackler on the play as Pat Richter hauled the ball in. They played Jerry Smith in the first half at tight end, and now it's Pat Richter, number 88. Bob Long is in. He's wide on the right side with Charlie Taylor to the left. They haven't thrown much to Taylor. And now they look for him long, and Taylor can't get there. Taylor needed about three more steps. He was chased by Dick LeBeau. We talked about LeBeau earlier. He's 11 years in the league, but he's, I guess it's his experience and knowledge, Pat. He stays with those speedsters right down the field. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. The fact that Taylor does have great speed, I think he's been clocking about 9-6. And yet, the earlier one, one time tonight, he got past LeBeau, and LeBeau was able to recover and catch him before the ball got there. And Taylor, although the pass was well thrown, couldn't hang on because LeBeau was so close by. As Taylor leaves the game now. That time, he was right with him. LeBeau was step for step. Sonny Randall, who belonged to the Dallas Cowboys before coming over to the Redskins, number 84 is in the ball game, and he comes split right for the Redskins on this second and 10 play. Schultz and Allen in the backfield. Coming this way is Jerry Allen, and he made a good cut. He ran right inside. Joe Robb, the left defensive end of the Lions. And Lem Barney had to come up from the corner spot to make the tackle. Lem Barney is number 20. Watch him come up to face this end sweep. Looked as if Robb had done a good, a good job of tearing down the blockers, but now as Allen made that good cut, Barney had to chase from behind. That's good hustle. And he has the speed to take him where he wants to go. It's first and ten from the 40-yard line of the Lions. Redskins already leading by six. Have a head of steam up at the moment. The quickie out here, caught by Randall, and what a pasting he took. Nick LeBeau delivered it to him, and that's the price you pay for being a receiver, Don Perkins. LeBeau didn't spare anything. Very fine reception, but uh, Jack liked to say, if you want to dance, you got to pay the fiddler. And, uh, and Sonny Randall took quite a blow that time. And Dick LeBeau was the fiddler. The ball is down to the 34-yard line of the Lions now, second down and four. We're getting some more good examples of watch Jurgensen as he's in a throwing mood, the way he whips that arm forward. They caught him a couple of times in the first half, but he's had better protection in this half. Or maybe he's just getting rid of the ball a little more quickly. This is the running play with Schultz and nothing doing. Schultz was stopped by the outside linebacker, Wayne Walker, along with Larry Hand, the defensive end, who simply was not moved out of there. A couple of other scores, the New York Jets nothing, Minnesota nothing, that's in the first period, and Cincinnati three, Pittsburgh three, also in the first period. That's the last football game that will be played in that Pittsburgh stadium. They'll be tearing it down at the end of the football, baseball season, and they'll have a new stadium in Pittsburgh for the Steelers next year. The ball's on the 33-yard line, third down, and the Redskins need three to retain possession. Jorgensen tried for his tight end, Richter, who went high to try to get the ball. He was covered by Walker and by Mike Weger. Richter is a big fella at 6'5", and he went high to try to pull it down from Jorgensen, but couldn't get it. It's fourth down, and Gogolak is going to try for three, and if he makes it, that'll really put the Lions under the gun because they trail by six right now. He's done this before, distance-wise, Pat. Oh, yes, and watching him... Uh before the game, he was reaching it in this direction with ease from 47, 48 yards. This will be from 40, so he can certainly get it there. He kicked one from 15, one from 34. This one's partially blocked, and it's caught by Lem Barney. He's only got a couple of He's going to score. There are no flags, and Barney's going to trot into the end zone. He's playing with the Redskin pursuers, and he's across the goal line. 
Hennig. Oh, boy, did you see those blocks he got? One block on Gogolak, the man who kicked the ball by Paul Newmark. I thought uh, just tore him right in half. I have never seen such a shot. Watch the block on Gogolak. Just watch Gogolak as he comes into the picture. The block by number 58, Newmark. Right there. And Barney knew he was home free. Took a little trip down the sideline with a pick skin under his arm to tie the game at 13-all. And now it'll be Errol Mann trying to put the Lions out in front in this football game. We've got something going here, folks, with 2.42 remaining in the third quarter. Lions lead with a score. Detroit, 14. The Redskins, 13. Errol Mann will be kicking off for the Lions, who are now out in front of the game with 2.42 remaining in the third quarter. It's 14 to 13. The deep men are Walt the Flea Roberts, who is closest to you. And at the top of the screen, Ricky Harris. He's hidden behind that goalpost, and you can see him better than I can. That's Harris. Thank you. Here's the kick by Mann. Boy, he did that easily, didn't he? Roberts going to try it from four yards deep. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. 44. And the tackler for Detroit who had him hemmed in on the sideline with right number 89. Walt the Flea Roberts. Here comes the flea, Walter Roberts. He just barely got up the alley right there. Watch him make his move to the outside here and take advantage of those blocks. Errol Mann is the kicker, number 12, who finally makes the initial slow up. And then Wright came in to help nail him down. So Jurgensen has good field position. They give him the 45-yard line, and on first down, he wants to throw. Throws to the sideline and incomplete, and the defender, Lem Barney, had slipped down. In fact, Richter was free for a moment. That could be done with design, uh, Don. Uh, the fact that uh, the Redskins remember that Barney's just been running about 75 yards with that blocked field goal. They might be figuring he's a little tired and take advantage of it. I'm sure they had that in mind, Pat. Incidentally, the, run, uh, the Redskins have two new running backs in the backfield, the rookie Larry Brown and A.D. Whitfield, who's a four-year veteran. And Mr. Whitfield and Mr. Perkins, from whom you just heard, were teammates at Dallas. By the way, Roberts used to be a member of the Lions. The fellow just ran that kickback to the 45-yard line from four yards deep. Second down and ten. Pressure. Screen. And what a great bit of reading out there. The tackler on the play was Mooney, the linebacker. Ed Mooney, the second-year man from Texas Tech. He read that one. The story about John Baker is that he was taken out of the game by his coach, Joe Schmidt. There's uh, John. Because the coach did not agree with the penalty that was assessed against Baker. So he was not kicked out of the game. Well, the coach agreed with the penalty, but didn't like Baker's action. So Joe Schmidt took him out. Third down play. Jurgensen throwing. And it is a reception by Pat Richter, number 88, with Mike Weger covering. That won't be enough for the first down, however. But this is a remarkable catch. Watch this by Richter just before he goes out of bounds. I don't know how young on to this. But he does get both feet down inbounds, no question about it. And he made sure by stepping down inbounds once again. It's a fourth down play, Mike Bragg in. 110 remaining in the third quarter. Detroit leading 14 to 13. We're in Tampa, Florida. And the deep men for the Lions are Lem Barney and Aldi Taylor. Fair catch is called for and is taken by Walton, number 49. And there's a little action down there as uh, Walton was bumped by one of the Redskins. And something came of that, but then nothing came of it. Lions on the move, and they're kicking out here to Mel Farr. He's across the 40 yard line. The other receiver on that side had taken the defenders outside and Farr slipped into that slot and Munson hit him. 
We might update a couple more scores for you. The Jets, the New York Jets over Minnesota now 7 to nothing in the first period as Namath has thrown to Maynard for the touchdown. And the Chicago Bears lead Buffalo 20 to 16. That's in the fourth quarter. They credit Blum Barney as this running play comes outside with McGetty carrying the ball and crossing down into Redskin territory. Before the hit was made by Aaron Martin, number 40, on number 40. They credit Lim Barney with a 77-yard return of the block field goal attempt. That's the end of the third quarter. The end of the third quarter with the score. Detroit 14, Washington 13. Well, we start the fourth quarter. I'm Jack Buck, Pat Summer all alongside. Don Perkins, you'll hear again later from Bill Mazur. Jerry Rush of the Lions just headed for the dressing room. We don't know what it's all about. I know, Pat, you want to talk about Paul Newhoff and give credit where credit is due. We spoke a minute ago about the block that he threw, but we've learned since then that it was also he who blocked the field goal attempt by Gogolak. Then he got up and threw that fine block on Gogolak again. 77 yards, the touchdown by Barnes. It's second and five from the 48 of the Redskins, and Nick Eddy goes down to the 45-yard line. And he has a first down for the Lions, it appears. It is a first down. We have 42,000 people plus here in Tampa. I know the Lions have waited a long time to get this combination in their backfield, uh, Eddie and Parr as their running backs. Had high hopes when the two of them came up, but uh, in between seasons, there have been knee injuries to both. Now they look healthy. And that should prove exciting for the Lion football fans. Once it is played all the way, and this time he gives to Mel Parr. And the third year back from UCLA dived forward. He's 6'1", 208. He can move, and he knew he was going to go down, so he got what he could. Now, Perkins, I think uh, fans of both of these teams are going to watch some exciting football this fall. I think so. Joe Schmidt said he spent two years building. He said this year he's, he's arrived. So we'll see with the, with the Detroit Lions. It's a second down play, second and five as far picked up five. Munson with a one-point lead, staying on the ground, and Nick Eddy had to pick a different hole, slid off to his left. He picked up about three yards, making a third and two, clock running, 13.40 remaining in the game. That this isn't too early, is it? They have a couple of more weeks, three weeks before the regular season goes, but two more preseason games. It's not too early to be at a peak, is it? Certainly not, particularly when you're coming off a, a season like both these clubs had last year. Disappointing. Uh, they'd like to build that winning attitude. I know that's true of Vince Lombardi and certainly true of Will Smith. A good look at uh, Munson, quarterback, on a third and two situation. Now he goes to the air. He doesn't mind running, by the way. He needs, whoop, he slipped down. He would have had the first down, but he slipped down. And then was covered by Ricky Harris, along with Chris Henberger, who had come up from the linebacker spot. And the defensive end, John Hoffman. That Hoffman is something, by the way. He is number 85, and he is 6'7". He weighs 260 pounds, a first-year man from Hawaii. And the fact that he's playing that end spot moves he can, means that he can also move. That. Certainly, if you're going to play defensive end, you've got to be agile enough to get out and uh, at least meet the wide plays or take down some of the interference. That speaks pretty well for Hoffman. It's fourth down, and the Lions, with a one-point lead, want to keep the football, so they're going to go for that one yard. And the fans like this. A long count, and a give to Eddie. First down, and the Lions will keep the football. Well, you can remember that play when we look at the final score tonight, however it turns out. Sort of surprising that they went for the first down, leading by one point. If they kicked a field goal, uh, Washington would then have had to have a touchdown to go back ahead of them. From the end zone, you'll have a chance to watch this hole open up and watch the block by Mel Farr first as he comes up on the Redskin linebacker just at the corner of the picture. But the whole Detroit offensive line got off uh, well on the ball last time. Chuck Walden was another key blocker. The left guard, number 63. Now on a first down play, Carr cutting back, was driven back inside the end. He was driven back inside John Hoffman, about whom we were talking a while ago. And then the hit was made. Carr at 208, Don Perkins, is, uh, has a good enough size as a running back to do a little blocking for his fellow running back. And this was the big disappointment with Mel, only in himself the first year. He felt that he didn't block well enough. 
course, Mel ran for almost 1,000 yards as a rookie, and I don't think uh, the Lions really expected much more of him. But he's concerned about his block, and he wants to improve and be a complete football player. The ball's at the 28-yard line, a second down play for the Lions, second and eight. Well, the Redskins faked the safety blitz, but they didn't come. And here's that safety valve out to par. And Aaron Martin latches on to him, and down he goes, but he's inside the 25-yard line. Munson was not uh, affected by the fake of the blitz. Something that the Lions have been able to take advantage of. Watch far as he just drifts off into the flat. The linebackers, Hamburger, Huff, and Roussel drifting deep. And Munson just dumped it out to far. Aaron Martin on the tackle with Hamburger number 55 helping. It's a third down play. Third and three for the Lions who gambled a moment ago. We have 10-10 left in this football game. Detroit leads Washington 14-13. They met twice last year, once in regular season. Washington won both games. Third and three. Over the middle and a touchdown. pass by Munson. We had Pat, a more logical receiver out here in the running back. Eddie was slipped out, but he went for the six. Watch Eddie come out into the flat. This ball just barely gets between the Redskin defender. I don't know how far he kept his eyes on it. It was a double wing formation, you might have noticed, so it had to be man-to-man -man covered by the Redskin secondary. And Sanders, the tight end, was in the same area, and he brought a lot of defensive people with him. But Munson hit par for 30 yards, and now it's 20 to 13. And this very important extra point attempt is good by Errol Mann. The score, the Lions 21 and Washington 13. Errol Mann, the first year player for Detroit, will kick off. The deep men for the Redskins. Closest to you, it's uh, Ricky Harris. And at the top of the screen, Walt Roberts. Roberts showed you what he could do a while ago with a 44-yard return. The Redskins need a little field position right here because they trail by more than seven. It's an eight-point deficit. And the high kick is taken by Roberts. 15-yard line, 20-yard line, 25. And he cuts back inside, but the Lions pursue and stop the play shy of the 30. 9.40 remaining in the game. Well, this is when we see, there's Roberts who returned the ball. This is when we see Mr. Jurgensen go to work, uh, Pat, in an obvious passing situation. None better, I don't suppose, that when the chips get down there, like they are now for a team, nobody better at just simply dropping back and throwing the ball. Taylor's on the left side. Bob Long at the top of the screen. Jerry Allen trying to shake loose, and he can't. Paul Newmoff, number 58, who's played quite a game this evening, made the Detroit tackle. Now we have nine minutes left in the game. Other games tonight. Uh, it's the Chicago Bears now 23, Buffalo 16, as Mac Percival has kicked five field goals to the Bears. In the second period, Cincinnati 6, Pittsburgh 3. Henry Dyer is in the running backfield along with Jerry Allen. Jerry Smith is the tight end. Here goes Henry Dyer outside, inside, and down at the 30-yard line for no gain on the play. And it'll be third down and eight. There is Vince Lombardi. Bill Austin uh, alongside. His ball club has won two and lost one. They defeated Atlanta. They defeated Chicago. They lost to Buffalo. They had a week off while other teams were playing. And now they're on the short end of a 21-13 score with 8.05 left. From the 30-yard line, third and eight. Bob Long to the left, Charlie Taylor at the top of your screen. Jerry Smith, the tight end, is split left. Jurgensen doesn't run very often. He drops the ball and shy of a first down as we view it from here on the third down play. Jurgensen looking up at the heavens wondering how in the world can I drop that football. 
It looks to me as if he was still trying to make up his mind whether to run or to pass and never really got a good grip on it. There it goes right there. He might have been trying to pull it back. He might have seen somebody open. He's lucky he got the ball back, really. Well, that was a third down play, and they measure. And he barely got it. The nose of the football got it. Well, he's happy now. He thought he had goofed it up, Pat. He just didn't want to face Lombardi once he got to the sideline. Maybe that was the reason that Sonny doesn't run with the ball very often. <laughs> Could be. I think it points out something that running with that football is not as easy as football players make it look. The ball at the 38 yard line for a first down for the Redskins who really needed that possession and didn't have to gamble because they got the first down. Now the draw to Dyer. Dyer got back that by by the middle linebacker which is so important but then Mike Lucci got some help from Dennis Moore the tackle who chased the play. The middle linebacker is the big defensive man in that draw Don. Yes that's right he certainly is. This is the man that you have to key an option off of. I might mention that Dyer has been with a couple of NFL clubs this year. He's been traded uh, or released a couple of times and perhaps he's found a home here in Washington. It's a second down play. Second down and three. Jurgensen gives to Dyer. Trying for the first down. He's pretty close. Six and a half minutes left and Jurgensen uh, can't afford to use much more time on this drive, Pat. Well, I think it goes right back to, to what we said when we began this telecast that Vince Lombardi wants to establish a running game. He wants to supplement Jurgensen's fine passing with two backs back there who can advance the ball on the ground. It'll make things a lot easier if he can. It's another first down. It must be tough for the players that, who are on the fringe tonight to know that seven Redskins and seven Lions must be cut by Monday at 4 o'clock. I'll guarantee you they have been down that team roster many, many more times tonight than we have. And there are some of them who, well, just frankly, might not be wearing that Detroit uniform tomorrow. The ball on the 48-yard line of the Redskins, a first down. Now Jurgensen to the air. Walker after him, hit him, the pass thrown and completed. And Richter hauled it in with Len Barney making the tackle. And Jurgensen was really blasted by Wayne Walker, who came straight on. Walker that time jumped all the way over a blocker. Now here is Bob Long. As he cuts across and makes the pass reception, I think he might have hurt his leg. Long came off the field limping slightly. I thought he was 88 Richter. He doesn't appear to be seriously hurt. But of course we're only guessing from what we can see. It's a first down down to the 35 yard line. Taylor goes to the right. Roberts is on the left side. And the running play gets only a yard or two. Henry Dyer, the fullback carrying the ball. And there's Wayne Walker on the tackle once again. We didn't see Jerry Rush come back, the uh, defensive right tackle for the Lions. Dennis Moore, number 70, is playing that spot. Third year man from USC. You start to look at the, the defensive unit and the offensive unit of the Redskins, and it'll indicate, I think, how much this game does mean. Kareth is still playing, Wayne Walker is still playing, Laboa is playing, Body is still playing. Here's a blitz. And Jurgensen steps into the pocket and throws, and Jerry Smith has an incomplete with a great defensive effort by number 28, Mike Weger. Weger had been whipped just before the ball came down. He recovered and broke up the potential touchdown pass. I think you have to give credit, too, Jack, to the defensive rush of the Lions because if Jurgensen hadn't had to step up in that pocket to avoid them, he might have been able to get that ball out to Smith. And there's Jurgensen. How many years has he been around? Well, this is his 13th season. And he's the pride of Duke University, a six-footer, 203. Appears to be carrying a little less weight, Don Perkins, this year than he did last. That's right. Coach Lombardi's got this fellow's work in here in training camp, and uh, they've dedicated themselves to winning this year. Third and nine for the Redskins from the 34 of Detroit. Well, you saw it. You saw it, and you saw it. 
Number 71, a familiar number, Alex Karras leading the way. That's when the football game really gets to be fun to the defensive uh, linemen and to the linebackers because they know the other club's got to pass. They don't have to worry too much about defending against the running play. Linebackers can blitz and take a few chances. And the defensive linemen can, linemen rather, can really tee off on a guy across the line. That loss took them away from field goal range, Pat, which would have been very valuable to them. Instead, it's a punting situation with Mike Bragg. I wonder if he will kick it. Standing inside is 45. And he does put it high up in the air, and the Redskins hopeful of downing the football, but it goes into the end zone. Unable to get to it was Jerry Allen, number 20. He wanted to down it and pin the Lions up against their own goal line. The Detroit Lions would like to use up some of the four minutes and eight seconds remaining in this football game. Bill Munson has played the whole game as Aldi Taylor in there now as a setback. Up on the wing, it's Barney, and here's Taylor running with the football. Taylor to the 30, 35, 40-yard line. And Ricky Harris wrestled him out of bounds. And he gave you a look there at some of those moves that we were talking about a little bit earlier. The hole that was originally designed for that play to go through was closed. He just shook his shoulders a couple of times and took it to the outside, and there was nobody there. Ellie Taylor was the number one pick of the Detroit Lions. 4.02 remaining. Ball on the 40-yard line. First down play. Running with the ball is Watkins. Hey, some fists are thrown down there, but they're quickly pulled apart. Spain Musgrove, number 71, got into it with the Lions, but only briefly. You notice that Sam Huff is back in the lineup. He walked off injured a while ago. He's number 70, the middle linebacker for the Redskins. 342, 340 remaining in the game. The clock running. 21 to 13. Detroit leads it. Second down and 10. Watkins, number 30, on a swing pass. Gets a block, gets a hit, and drives beyond the 45-yard line. Now the uh, Lions at this phase have put in some fresh personnel. Jim Yarborough, number 75, was leading the blocking that time from the left tackle spot. He's a first-year man from Florida, and a lot of folks in this area know him. Comes from nearby Arcadia, I believe. He was a tight end at the University of Florida, but the Lions have moved him to tackle. The ball at the 48-yard line and a third down. Third and two. Lions would really like to get this first down. And Munson's going to throw. He throws outside. And Centered the ball, made the tackle on Brick Owens, who stepped up inside and picked that one off. Here we go again, and watch Munson as he throws to the sideline, and Owens had this figured perfectly. We had a technical problem. You couldn't really see it, but Owens stepped just in front of the receiver. You now late in the game when the fans are yelling, go, 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 gamble, 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 that's why they don't do it. But Munson did. That was an old... Uh, adage, I guess, that uh, you're coaching the bench. You can't uh, let those folks who sit up in the stands tell you what to do with your football team. Ball's on the 14-yard line. That's going to have time. They trail by eight. Jurgensen. Going. Caught by Smith. Ready to get out of He does. He's got the clock for 207 remaining. You can see it shaping up now. We'll have about one more play, then the two-minute warning, and then what will happen? Here's that quick delivery of Jurgensen. As he wastes no time now putting that football in the air. Watch that arm as it flips. It looks to Jerry Smith. Now you saw that look in the opposite direction. That's all with a purpose, too. A lot of defensive backs look at the quarterback's eyes. That's Jerry Smith. And on this replay, you could see Lenny Hoss really battling on the blocking. First and goal, Washington from the four-yard line. Detroit leading 21-13. 155 remaining in the game. Running backs to Jerry Allen and Henry Dyer. Wide to the left. Bob Long, who's back in the game. Taylor to the right. 
Bergen to the tire, line of scrimmage, that's all. And now we have 150 left in the clock running. 145 left. The Redskins need a field goal and a touchdown, Pat. They might settle for that field goal a little bit on the early side. Well, it's, it's something to think about. I think they were this close and with only 130 now left and with three timeouts left, they probably going to try to get that touchdown this time. And I think you've seen your last running play for a while, too. He probably wants to stop that clock. Long to the left, Taylor to the right. The fake to Dyer. The throw to Long. And thrown in the end zone, and we might have some interference. Now, it could be offensive, could be defensive. Covering on the play was Wayne Rasmussen. And he is called for interference. Holding. Well, he held him before the ball was thrown. And half the distance is the call. Takes the ball to the two. It's an automatic first down. First and goal from the two. But only 117 left. 21-13. Detroit leading. Jorgensen trying to get into the end zone. Sends Long to the right, Bob Long, and Charlie Taylor to the left. Gary Smith is a tight end on the right side. They give to Allen. Allen goes in. Gary Allen goes in from two yards out. At 21 to 19. Watch it again as we look from ground level. Maybe you can pick up the block by the lead back here, Henry Dyer. He just left your picture. But Allen smell that end zone. He had good blocking up front by Walter Rock and Willie Banks. Go Galak. Kicked the extra point, which wasn't too important because it already had been 21 to 19. That makes it 21 to 20. But now the Redskins have to get the football back. 114 remaining in this football game. Redskins will be kicking off, and everybody in the world who is watching this game is thinking about an onside kick. One thing about this kick, uh, this onside kick, which I'm sure is coming up, is the fact that Gogolak is a soccer-style kicker. That is, he approaches the ball from the side, and because of that, he can kick an onside kick equally as well to either side, either to his right or to his left. If you are conventional style, it's pretty difficult to go to your right with it. He can go either way. So the Lions crowded up, up front. Now watch this mayhem when he kicks the football. I want you to kick it all the way now. It went 10 yards, and it's recovered by Detroit. The Lions go from their own 49-yard line, latching onto the football. The Lions barefoot, former Redskin, got the ball. 55 seconds remaining in the game. The clock is running. Running with the ball was Watkins. Got inside the 50, held onto the football, which is most important. And the Redskins called timeout to stop the clock, which they do, with 41 seconds remaining in the game, and Detroit leading by one point. Redskins still have two left after this one. They had not used one up until that point. So with 41 seconds, they've still got time if they can hold Detroit now. Talking about this Detroit team and uh, the fact that last year was a disappointing one, Jack. I think if you look back, uh, it was probably two seasons for Detroit. They finished 4-8-2, and two, but after the first seven games, they led the Central Division, in fact. Their record was 3-2-1. and one. Last half, it was 1-5-1. and one. A lot of injuries just about that time took their toll. They're in that Central Division with Chicago, Green Bay, and Minnesota, and they've shown enough here tonight to draw a little attention. It's second down and eight. The clock will start with the snap of the ball. 41 seconds remaining. Watkins running with the ball again. And inside the 40-yard line he goes. And down Perkins, it's a pretty good indication that they figure that Watkins has good hands or they wouldn't be giving him the football That's in this right. situation. They, they certainly wouldn't, Jack. And uh, this is one of the areas that Lombardi is concerned with on his Washington team. 
He wants them to be able to stop the opposition. Stop them, especially when they have the ball. And now another timeout employed by the Redskins. 34 seconds left, but don't go away from our telecast because Bill Mazur is down on the playing field and he'll be latching on to some of these football players for a post-game visit, which I'm very sure you'll enjoy. The ball's on the 39-yard line of the Redskins, as if you were going to leave now. Anyhow, 34 seconds left. Munson to Watkins. Boy, they almost missed connections on that handoff, didn't they, Pat? Just about. I might bring you up to date on another game. The New York Jets now lead Minnesota 10-7. They are in the second period. Namath threw one to Maynard. Uh, Jim Turner had a field goal. Minnesota's now scored, so it's 10-7. Now the Redskins have employed their last timeout of this football game, and there are 30 seconds remaining in the contest, with Detroit leading by one, 21 to 20. Goglak kicked the field goal, and Washington led. Munson threw to Sanders for five, and Detroit had the lead. Ergenson hit Smith for 27 yards, and Washington went back out in front at the half, 10 to seven. Gogolak's field goal made it 13 to seven in the third quarter. And then the 70 yard return of the blocked field goal attempt by Lem Varney, 77 yards. Detroit had the lead and the pass months into far 21 to 13. The dash by Allen 21 to 20. Here we are. Second down and 10 situation for the Lions. Munson just falls on the ball. 25 seconds remaining in the half 23. And the Redskins will go right to work, 18 seconds. We don't know how close that clock is to being official. There's a third down play coming up, and so the Redskins have used all their timeouts, and now the gun sounds in this contest is over. And it's amazing as uh, the Detroit Lions beat Washington 21 to 20. It's amazing how fast the complexion of a football game can turn around. That's Joe Schmidt. Uh, in the white shirt, civilian clothes, of course, walking off with two of his players right there, carrying the football. Well, that's the end of the game, and the final score is Detroit 21, Washington 20. Let's go down to Bill Mazur on the playing field with one of the outstanding players of tonight's game. Bill. Thank you very much. Standing next to me is Lem Varney, who is a fine, Lem, I hate to use the word best. Chuck Knox tells me you are the best defensive back in the National Football League. You sure had yourself a night here in Tampa. Well, I think it was a good night for the whole team. You know, any time we win, I think it's a good night, Bill. Who did, who did you have most of the night? Well, as you know, Washington, they have a full set offense, and they mostly interchange Bob Long some, and then Charlie Taylor some. Pretty tough. Right, they are. Taylor's got great speed. Right, as well as Bob Long. Both of them have great speed, good hand, as well as deceptive moves. Now, your coach, Chuck Knox, tells me you got the best feet in the league. Does he mean you dance pretty, or you're just great on defense? I don't know what Chuck means when he means that, Bill. <laughs> How did it feel when that field goal was blocked, and there you were all alone? You knew you were gone the minute you got around. Well, after I saw the two blocks alone, there were two key blocks, as you know, and after that, I... You know, this is all over. You want to have your heart broken just a little bit? It's okay. I'm going to show you that run. You want to see that run that was called? We don't have it yet. We don't have it yet. Lem, apparently, they don't want to break your heart. This is your third year in the league, Lem. You played at a small school called Jackson State. The first I knew about it was I saw a six foot, 255 pound young man named Berlin Biggs. Did you and Berlin play on the team? I played, I played two years. My freshman and sophomore ball was Berlin Biggs. Now, how many of the players on that Jackson State team? are now in professional football. Can you remember? Yes, I could, Bill, but I'd be here all night if I tried to. Let's You're see, uh, kidding. Yes, there are three Richardson brothers, Gloucester Richardson, Willie Richardson, Thomas Richardson, Berlin Biggs, as you mentioned, Frank Molin, Taff Reed, Speedy Duncan, Roy Hilton. Well, there are quite a few. How do you get such an illustrious alumni group at, at a small school like Jackson State? What? Well, as you know, they, uh, most, most of our ball players come from the South, basically, around Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, as well as Texas. And uh, down in the South, I think we have a good brand of ball players. Lem, I I'm going to do something. Uh, Tony, if it's not permitted, sir, uh, I was just going to say, I've got a fellow standing right here. I want to bring him in, too. Mel, come over here. Sure. This is one of the greatest running halfbacks in all of football, a sleepy-eyed guy from UCLA named Mel Clark. How's your leg? Well, it's, it's good. It's good. It's uh, good. It's what I expected, you know, it's real good, and uh, I've been working hard on it, and uh, it's coming around slowly, but surely, you know. Mel, this is an unusual time in, in football. Uh, runners like Gail Sayers, Emerson Boozer, yourself, have all been cut down with leg injuries. Why? 
I, I wish I knew, you know. If we knew why, I guess we could, uh, they can try to prevent it, you know. That's something you have to play with when you're playing football, especially a running back, because you get hit up from all different angles, you know, and uh, you're susceptible to these injuries, you know, like knee injuries, you know. And all I hope, I pray and hope that, the, that, you know, this knee is all right and that it doesn't bother me, you know, because I feel good and I want to come back 100% uh, this year. I was out to a good start last year and I had knee injuries, so I got to just come back this year and do better. Mel, it's hard for a guy, I suppose, to say in front of a television audience whether you favor a leg or you don't favor a leg. But is there a tendency, you know, a little bit to kind of favor it? No, I don't think so. You know, I think if I favor the leg, I'm not going to be a, a good football player. I'm not going to run the ball as well as I could if I favor the leg, you know. And if I favor that leg, I probably get the other leg hurt. So I just go out there and run with the reckless of and, you know, that a halfback should and line. just uh, hope that, uh, you know, uh, I don't get hurt again. Hey, listen, now, no kid. When you see this guy, Barney, dancing around, he goes back in front formation, and there he is, right? He wants to be a running back. You no, know, I told him, I said, won't you come another in halfback and let me run fullback? We'll both be in the back. <laughs> How about it, Lev? No, Bill, I had my uh, offensive days when I was in junior high, in, in high school. Hey, you mean to tell me that all the time you were at Jackson State, coach never played you on offense? No, he didn't. Just very few, very little at our flanker. Truly, don't you sometimes wish they'd put you back there? Don't the running backs Never. make more money than Never. the defensive backs? Well, this is true to a point, but I think that today... Uh, we work harder, though. <laughs> <laughs> we work harder, though. That's think, why we get the knee injuries, you know? I think that's the old stigmatized deal about the offensive ball players being uh, paid more than the defensive ball players, but I think today that things are going to be changed. It's a new breed of cats in town, special defenses, and I think the things are going to break through. <laughs> you know, you, they talk about triple threat football players. You realize you do everything but throw the football. You kick it, you run it, you defend it. How about throwing it? Can he throw now? Well, I, I would... I wouldn't want him to be quarterback of my team. You know, he could do all the rest of it. He's great in all the rest of it. I don't think I want him to be quarterback of my team. Man. How good a team do you guys have, Lamb? Well, I think right now, Bill, we're, we're just about at midpoint as far as uh, putting things together. As you've seen tonight, we had uh, just not much, but a little, little breakdown in the block and during the first period. But in the second period, they came back. And I think if we could get the things jailing offensively as well as defensively, I think we'll be a great contender in our conference this year. I won't tell you which coach it was that told me the defense of Detroit is set, Mel. Well, if the offense catches up with it, you guys have got a great chance. You know, chance. that's the main problem I'm worried about, you know, as a running back. I, with Detroit for the last couple of years, you know, we really haven't had a really outstanding offense. This year, we've got the talent. We've got everything in the makings to have a great offense, but we've got to get it together. You, as you notice today, we had uh, good drives going. You know, we get these penalties, holding outside and stuff like that, and set us back. And these are the things, the mistakes we're trying to overcome here with the Lions. And once we do that, I tell you, we're going to be a hard team to beat in our division. You know, the one thing I was thinking about as you were talking, and he was talking all about Jackson State, which is really incredible. <laughs> a black school in Mississippi that has produced so many great football you know, players. I, you know how many great running backs have come out of the Pacific Coast? No, I mean, the Pacific Coast, oh yeah. OJ, huh? OJ, OJ, and a lot of other, you know. Can he run like Mel Farr? I tell you, OJ's got the, all the tools, and I think he's going to be a great pro. I really do, you know. I really do. He's got all the material. He's got the... Look at this, fellas. You want to cry, Lamb. I want you to cry all the way on his 84-yard run. I think, let me put my glasses on a second. Yeah, here's the punt. Call it all the way. You'll be able to see the clip. Here's the punt. Go ahead. Okay, as you see, he punted. The ball was a fairly high ball. I was seeing the ball about on the nine-yard line. I got some fairly good block. He got back, right, got back to the wall. And uh, after that, it was daylight except one man, and I played pity fight with him all the way down the field until about the 20-yard line. And afterwards, as, as you can see, on any uh, broken field running, on the interception or kick or punt return, they're going to be clipped sometimes because everybody's giving all that effort to block. Now, here's uh, the fumble by Sanders. Mal Paul. Well, it was the center to, to Charlie Sanders. He made a good catch. And he put a move on a guy right here, and he's trying to get extra yards, and the guy just popped the ball right under his arm and picked it up. And he's uh, almost off to the races, you know. And these are the things I'm talking about that, are, that has hurt the Lions offense for the last three years. And if we can overcome this, I think we're going to be a fine offensive team. Watch Treplin. That's Munson. Yeah, he's throwing a, a, a play out past the tri Triplin on the goal line. It was a good run by Triplin. Now here's the touchdown pass to Sanders. What kind of a... Uh, uh, a straight drop back and he had an X-Quick. We call it an X-Quick. And Charlie went right over the middle and got the ball. Now here's uh, the Jurgensen touchdown pass. Was it against Drew Lamb to Smith? No, it was against uh, our strong safety, Mike Wigger. It was strong formation left. Nine came out and did a fake like he was going to do a nine center. And X did a, uh, a corner. It was a good pass, good move he put on Wigger. And unfortunately got burned. You know, uh, 
it was down on this side of the field. Was it 28 on your ball club that had him? Right, Mike Wigger. Right, I'll yeah, say Wigger. Right. And, uh, yeah, because it was there a tight end, the strong strong end, no? Right, it was tight end. As you know, Wigger, this is Wigger's second year. He started last year after Maher was traded to New York. And he's a fine contender as far as safety. He's a good, strong safety. He knew Moss and myself were the only three-year men on the ball club. You were such a hit in the first half that we've decided to play your movie in the second half. Let's see. Uh, here's Lambarney again. Here's the fake kick. Right. You barely got the, you got that by an inch or two, you know. Right, I did. Barely got it. As we, as all week after we were going on over Washington's kicking game, we've seen it from our right, their left side, in on punts. He wouldn't rush in all the way, as uh, supposed to be done, on a punt, re punt return. That was a good run by uh, Jerry Allen, yeah. And you know who he was caught by? Watch it in stop action. Tell us who caught him, Mr. Barney. Watch. <laughs> well, we had a core force, as you see. I was up. It was a block and interference. He cut back very good. I had to get around, and there it was. I think he gained about 12 yards. Uh, here is your great moment of the night, Lamb. Watch this. This next play is yours. I want you to relish every moment of it. I was watching when he waved to the TV cannon, wave them off on him too. You know? I don't know who it was, Bill, but it was a block punt. I got Numoff. Numoff block. Yeah. Very good block by Numoff, and it was off to the races after that. Hey, on the next play, that was 76 yards. By, is that off? Thank you very much, Mel Farr and Lem Barty, and now back upstairs to Jack Buck. And this is Jack Buck saying goodbye from Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. 2120 Detroit. Ah!